The chips were down last DPC circuit, but they found an answer and shocked the world by introducing Fly at S4, claiming an unexpected third place at TI8. Although unchanged from last season, they headed to Hamburg a man down, but match-winning Maverick Sumail returns for the major, and it's time to get down to business. Their season starts here, introducing the NA Regionals champions, Evil Geniuses. Inseparable duo Jabs and Ice 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 joined from rivals Mineski this season. And this team wasted no time in taking over the Southeast Asian region. Unbeaten in the regional qualifiers for King's Cup and the Kuala Lumpur Major, the stage is set for them to continue their epic run. But will they find glory on home turf? Fanatic. Welcome back to the Kuala Lumpur Major. It is the second series of the day and the final series of the day, actually, as well as we wrap up things in the lower bracket and we reduce the field to just six teams heading to the main event itself inside the arena, of course, after a day off tomorrow to give everyone a break here in Malaysia. Our final series, though, is a big one. It's the EG Super Team back with their main man, Samail, against the SEA Super Team, of course, of Fnatic. Big match for both teams, both looking for a top six finish. At the very least, they want to go further and they want to play in front of a packed audience inside the arena. Our three panelists are all ready. We welcome back Fogged. We've got Pilai Dye and BSJ. How are you doing, gents? Looking Good. forward to this one? Yep, I got yeah. sleep last night. It's the best series of the day for us, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. I'm looking forward to this series. I feel like it's either going to be a 2-0 stomp by EG or like a very tight three-game series. Okay. Like, are I'm, you I'm wondering what Fnatic's going to show this, up. And, I was told this morning it's going to be a sea change today. A sea change. I see what I did there. Mm. But no one thought that Vici was going to lose against TNC. TNC winning, not throwing away a 32k gold lead. They almost did. nearly did. They tried. <laughs> they tried hard they at times. Uh, but going through, I mean, are you, are you all convinced that this one actually is an EG favorite? Uh, after the way that we've seen like Fnatic in the last, in particular yesterday, I would think that yeah. Okay. Uh, in the beginning, like right when we first came out of TI, of course, we went to like the the Singapore land and we got to see Fnatic, and I was like, this team, this team's looking hot. Like everybody's playing top tier, everybody's like fantastic. But then, of course, we saw Ice 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 have some struggles. I think DJ's also been playing uncharacteristically, kind of shaky. So yeah, I think they have to step it up a bit here mm. for ZG. Well, if you're going to step it up at all, it's going to be now, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we picked out a couple of couple of players to talk about um, in terms of. Key players on both sides. There are so many key players on both sides. Actually, you could say everyone's a key player. But yep. we picked out Arteezy and Arbed to talk about in particular. Arteezy, really, because of the performance yesterday on the Arc Warden, which raises all sorts of, hmm, is that a, suddenly a Tier 1 carry that we've not looked at very much because we've got a great win rate here. But also because he hasn't he hasn't been the star in that team for them. And, and to step yep. up like that yesterday shows that you know, we can forget about him occasionally, but he's still got it. He's always been one of like the most beastly farmers, at least for me. I'd always watch like, games when EG was losing and stuff, and it would be like, Arteezy still at the top of the farm. So it does seem like it's a hero that really fits his style, and it's a hero that I guess people just kind of forgot about and didn't really think about the counters. Because mm. you're just thinking about these TBs, these PLs, and these Morphlings, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, even coming into this tournament, like it would be an Arteezy tournament to play, because all these heroes are heroes he... Like Terrorblade, for example. Mm. Even even PL and Morphling too. Like these are all heroes he can carry with, and like he feels very comfortable playing. On and the then you add Arc Ar Ar Warden, of course, and like, yep. yeah. And then on the other side, we've got Abed, youngster, highly talented, yep. very skilled. Everyone says could be the best player in SEA. Could even go on to be one of the best players in the world, but still very young, still learning his trade. Yeah, he's a very quiet guy, but 
I, I feel like if you just give him a hero that he asked for, he's just going to do his job in the game. I, I think both these players really love pushing the limits on whatever hero they're playing. Arteezy kind of does it in the farming um, realm, while Abed does it more on like the flashy, like dive you kind of strategy, the kind of play style. So I feel like Arc Gordon will either be first banned every game this series, or it's going to be picked every game. Mm. So I feel like both these players, I, we saw Paparazzi play it earlier, and it wasn't all that impressive, but it still won. Uh, so it just kind of goes to show that you don't have to play the hero perfectly when it's just that good right now. Uh, we were talking, we've been talking about it the last day or two. Yeah. Like everything that's good against Arc Warden just sucks. Like they right. tried Lycan, the hero just isn't very good right now. You think of all these like Slarks, PL's always banned. PL's really the only good hero right now that's good against it. And that just, I don't know, I think we'll, we'll be I mean, seeing it every game this yeah, series. Yeah, I mean there used to be, like for me, Spectre used to be like almost one of the best. Like you will always get on top of this Arc Warden. And then Storm. Like, I don't know about Storm this tournament, though. He hasn't been doing that well. But Storm mm -hmm. should be a really good hero against him. Like, how you can... It's all about getting on him, like, making it hard for him to play. Yeah. And the same with Ember. But all these heroes have, like, weird laning stages. And you pick if you pick Arc Warden this early and you need to respond immediately, like... Are you going to, like, Spectre right away? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, it's going to be tough, isn't it? We're into the uh, band stage. Uh, the other one that's in there is the Centaur, by the way. Yeah. 24 games, 75% win rate. What did I tell you at Hamburg? You did. What was the hero you that I did. said at Hamburg? You, you, and no one picked. No, no one was picking you, Centaur. You, you were an event too early, my friend. You I were an event was, too early. I thought it was going to be like Pango for this tournament. I switched it up and <laughs> no one's touching Pango. But at Hamburg, I was like, Centaur is like OP. I played this hero like actually a lot of times in pubs. And I was like, this feels amazing even as support. And then now people are doing it. You see also uh, EG, they banned the Brood. I think that's the other hero that also just ruins our Gordon. Yeah. They're going to pick it. They're going to pick it. Yeah, they're yeah. going to pick it here. I yeah. think Fnatic first picking this time is a mistake. Bane, maybe? Uh, I, I don't. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, they've been doing this like the entire tournament, right? First yeah. picking this yeah. uh, Tiny. And it's funny enough, it's something that Evil Geniuses did in the group stage. Yeah. They were picking Tiny first as well. Yeah, no, but is this misunderstanding, like it kind of limits your second pick here. Like they, maybe they would want to Silencer or something, but then you end up with Silencer Tiny. And, like, but don't you, don't you pick a core at that point in the second point so that it leaves the Tiny as, oh, we're not sure what it is? Yeah, but Five it's just, his, his team fight is just too bad. And if you... I feel if you first pick a tiny, you kind of have to make him mid, so he has some type of impact. Mm -hmm. I, like, whereas most teams are making the support. Aren't they? Yeah, yeah let, let's say you have this guy as a support now. The like you have him as a four tiny, and they have a four earthshaker. Like, let's say he gains you like a one point five k goal advantage. It's yeah. like it's not going to be enough. It's I, you're going to be this useless tiny later on. I just realized they picked the shaker because we've been talking about the only good carry against Arc Warden's peel. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I was thinking the same thing. Something we always, it's so easy to forget going into these games, but they have these predetermined, like they know Arc Warden's going to yeah. be a huge thing this series. So if they want to pick it with second, because most teams that have been picking it have first pick, and then they pick it second when they have first pick, they're like, okay, we can't give them the perfect PL game as a response. And so they pick the Shaker, which makes a lot of sense. I think it's also like both. I think like the Ember and the PL. It's like Shaker is pretty good against both of them. And sure. those are both the heroes that you want to ideally play versus the Arc Warden. So yeah, I do like that setup by AG. A fanatic stump by this. Yeah, but they, yeah they're, they're, they're stumped by this. So like time. really, that's that's what annoys me. Because like they first pick a Tiny and then EG Arc Warden's like, come on, guys. You had to know this was coming. Maybe their plan right. against the Arc Warden was to PL, though. So maybe they didn't think like. Yeah, but <laughs> all right. But then they should. Hey, you never know. Yeah, 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 fair enough, fair enough. They, they didn't you just think about first pick, did they? Easily peel into a. Uh, it's not an unplayable. Shaker, I think yeah. you can too. Yeah, it's just it, it's just it's a little bit annoying. Right? No, yes. and then and then you end up with this PL tiny. It looks really awkward if you have PL tiny first. Too. Like this is like their lineup has way more potential now. Like. I, I don't know. Enigma is not really very good versus awkward, and, and uh, maybe you can run him over in lane. There's the PL. I still like ban it, it anyway. Yeah. They still ban the just, PL. Just to make sure, yeah. right? No, I like this actually. The Enigma is definitely the pick. They they need that. Else they're they're gonna end up with one of these these lineups without team, like a Pinex lineup basically, mm. where yeah. like something just impossible to play. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. <laughs> Pinex, they've had like one out of six lineups. It's true. Looks it is good. very true. And I, I think this is also cool because now it's like you're talking about like the tiny securing like a 1.5k net worth. Now Enigma's going to deny it even further. Yeah. Try to secure that laning phase and give good team fight. No, man. Honestly, though, like if you put if the Enigma lanes versus Arc Warden, I don't think Arc Warden feels good. Like I was thinking the opposite first. Like in the game when you get farmed the Arc Warden, like you'll probably just you know the Enigma can't black hole you just kill him, but you might not get to that point. Like he'll get an HOTD. Like none of your spells work. They're going to hit the Eidolons. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually think this is very good. They might just make sure they put the Arc Warden mid. If, and for Fnatic, I'm thinking to myself that you got to make sure you pick a really good matchup against the Arc Warden mid. Like even if you don't know what the mid laner is yet, because you want you want to force that Arc Warden into an awkward yep. laning stage. I feel like every game we've seen Arteezy as well as Abed have it. It's got a really good start, like almost yeah. free farm, like yeah. top of the CS. Which 
I, I don't know. I have to. I need to watch these replays back or something because I don't think Arc Warden's like a crappy laner. But no, I've never no, thought no, of no. him he's as like a. He's not that good, right? I've never he's got the base damage though, right? His he's base got damage 50, is high. He's got 50 base damage. He can't really. He can like push out the way. It's only 50. Yeah, it's like 51 maybe. Like it's one of those where it's like he's not weak. I just. Don't look at him and go, he's going to get free farm every time you pick him. I want Abed to play Invoker versus it personally. Yeah, yeah I was Me thinking too. Invoker too. So I, I think we can be looking for that fourth pick. Yeah, I totally agree. Then what is it? The, the Rubik people usually like that versus Enigma now. Seems to be the hero. Yeah, my favorite's always Wyvern, but they immediately ban that out. Yeah, the Unload Band is one of the S4 heroes. Of course, Evil Genius has been playing quite a lot. Do you got a silencer? played a lot of it here, actually. Fanatics turn to Okay. Yeah. I think Rubik Shaker's too weak, personally, as like a duo, and I think Crit plays both of them, right? Mm -hmm. Unless S4 is playing the Shaker, but I think it's usually just Crit playing most of those heroes. It also blocks the Phoenix, but I guess Phoenix yeah. isn't fantastic against Arc Warden. Just a popular hero right now. SAP's learning. Mm. Look at that, Lena, Marana, and Bane. Seconds. It's getting so good, it's going to replace you eventually. <laughs> Talking of which, there's new new AI news hosts in China, by the I way. We're that. all getting replaced as well. <laughs> It'll just be a, an AI bot doing the hosting, and then SAP will be doing all the analysis. Mm -hmm. There'll be yeah. no need for a panel. I don't really like those, like any actually those heroes versus a silencer, like Marana and Bane. Yeah. No. Like Marana, you get last worded in a lot of fights. You leap, and then you're just silenced, and you mm. can't even yeah. leap away or anything. Bane is, yeah. Bane, I mean, Bane, Bane you're playing that. You have like a very short time, which yeah. is useful. Yeah, well, there you go, SAP. I mean, Bane still does what Bane does, you know. It's just eventually, you're not gonna t like you don't want team fight, like you won't do anything. But like in the laning stage, it's still the same. Yeah. Like the level six, like gripping someone, like it's gonna work for a while. I like that pick. I don't really have a way to deal with it right now. Makes a lot of carries super awkward to play in the mid game here. I think Invoker's still their best option. Yeah, I, agree. I, think, I think it's still Invoker for sure. So how, what do they run as the core out of those last three? Invoker Not the Silencer, obviously. Uh, I I'm scared they'll ban. They'll, the Invoker will get banned if they don't take it here. Ten seconds remaining. I don't know. Playing Invoker versus Brewmaster. Five seconds and Silencer remaining. can be Yeah, annoying. like it looked, <laughs> looked nicer, right? With just the first two. Yeah. It's still fine, though. Like They've got a lot of setup. There has to be something else to how it. How crazy like, is, like, Visage? Yeah, exactly. I was thinking... Doesn't Abed love playing Visage? Yeah, it's really good versus Arc Warden, like in terms of pushing. I haven't had a single Visage Ooh, game, by the way. Whoa. That hero is traditionally oh. pretty good against Arc. Like, no. as the game goes on, yeah, you, get yeah, up yeah. And you get up in his face, he doesn't have enough damage to bring you down. Exactly. You can get Cyclone a lot in the game, though. Yeah, sure. That's one scary thing that I, like, I see a lot. No, but what I like is, like, how the, like, trade and farm. Like, Arc Warden's yeah. not going to smoke gank you, you know? That's true. That so is very you're true. You're going to farm, he's going to farm, and you'll probably be faster. There's uh, so many heroes left in the pool that like dominate Alk though. You have like the Morphling, you have the Bloodseeker Ember. Bloodseeker Ember. I mean, you'd imagine Monkey the last ban from Fnatic is going to be a Morph ban, isn't it? I, I feel like Morph is definitely the ban. <laughs> I feel but like Ember looks. I mean, we just we saw that from Sumail mm -hmm. versus Fada, and he just mm. he, lo he thrives off that matchup. Even though yeah. I, I actually don't think it's that. I, I think Alchemist actually does de relatively decent. Was that the best uh, best performance of the tournament so far? Mo like single-handed, like mm. first 20 minutes. I mean, it was pretty dominant. It I was from that. Yeah. yeah, it looked pretty perfect. And then like, who, I mean, Arteza kind of carried, like carried the hardest, I guess. Yeah, like, the, the game yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Can they protect it is the question. Uh, I feel like when you have Enigma, he denies the wave, so it's always pulled back to you early game. Like, obviously he gets the Helmdom eventually and there starts to be lane pressure, but I just look at, whenever I see an Alchemist, I think how early can the enemy team collapse on mid and like jungle area? Yeah. Because in the Ember game, it was like seven minutes in. That's just game yeah. over. And uh, they do have like some aggressive heroes on EG, but Silencer, Earthshaker, Arc Warden, kind of slow. Yeah, yeah, they don't have like this burst damage or anything to deal with him. I feel like they need that Hunter in the mid lane, that Sumail yeah. hero that's just going to crush him and follow him around. <sighs> so Huskar is their choice. <laughs> and they take... Oh, no. Spirit. Spirit. Okay, so DJ. Core Tiny? Yeah, Core yeah. Tiny. Oh, yeah, I guess MP does play it a decent amount. That's a hero to get on the face of the Arc Warden too later on. I, I, hmm. I mean, I think all the heroes we listed are their options. The Bloodseekers, the Embers. Yeah, Bloods yeah Bloodseeker, Ember, or Monkey King. Yeah. That's the three I would think. It's honestly, in my opinion, a, fr a free Monkey King game. Like, uh, the supports don't do much too early. They can't really afford to l really leave. I guess they can leave the Enigma alone, but I don't feel like Earth Spirit's actually good against you. 
He's only good against you if like the other hero also threatens you. Like so low armor do though. Do you do you dominate the Alchemist that badly? With monkey? I just feel Ember is did they ban it? No, they ban I think Bloodseeker and Ember look like the two better ones to me, personally. I like Bloodseeker too. Oh, three really, seconds. A really far monkey, though, is, is good. Whoa. Oh. That hero does dumpster <laughs> Alk in the laning stage. He really does. But do they have enough damage to, like, get the Alk down to half? You know what I mean? Like, in the mid game, like, if Alk doesn't get obliterated, can they really kill him? That, they get, it gives himself an option, too, versus the BKB black hole, right? At least. But, I mean, then they're really limited on damage. I have a global for that, right? And, oh, yeah, true. Whoops. Mm. I was wondering, what are they going to lane versus this Enigma? They yeah. actually can't kill this Necro. No, I mean, they're put, they're just putting Arc Warden versus Enigma, right? Like, Arc Warden Silencer. So, I think... I think I don't think the Arc Warden's going to be that far in this game. Like, I, I, I don't see how we... Maybe if they trial and form. Maybe they go aggro, actually. That's something they would do. Like, block with the Arc Shaker, go aggro, put the Panda. But I think this, like, whatever happens, this Enigma is going to put a lot of pressure on this game. And I don't think that, uh, I don't, I think Albert will be kind of fine. Like, the lane will be hard, but he'll jungle, the Bane will get level 6, and that should be alright. Alright, good stuff. Thank you, all three of you. Time to head to our commentary team for game number one then. A record-breaking Arc Warden game from RTZ yesterday. Can he repeat in the first game against Fnatic? Let's find out. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the final series. Before we make it to the main stage, it's EG Fanatic, and I couldn't be more excited for this elimination series. Trent, faith in the Alchemist. Where are you oh, at? Oh, the Alchemist. Faith in the Alchemist. Why would you have faith in an Alchemist when you could have faith in the Arteezy Arc ah, That's my question. The record I mean, breaker. That was definitely the big hero coming into this series. No question about it. Both teams playing it, mm -hmm. and both teams just kind of running entire games based off of it. So not too yep. shocking that he shows up. I, I loved the uh, the covering pick of the Earthshaker too, maybe preventing this idea of that PL that we've been kind of throwing around all day. It's like it's finally gonna come out versus the Arc Warden. But right. uh, as you said, it's the Alchemist, but it is one thing I also never like to bet against the DJ Earth Spirits. So. That's true, that's, uh, that's true. A lot of uh, player hero combinations Indeed. that um, fans around the world will be excited about. Enigma. Very exciting as well. We've seen him banned out a lot, but up against the Silencer. So EG might true. have an advantage in that matchup when it comes to Black Hole. But remember, there's a lot more to Enigma than just that big right, Black that's Hole. That's true. And Isis uh, struggled. Strug City. In terms of itemization last time on the Enigma, I think it was awful. Uh, it just well, did not seem... Well, what did he go for, Trent? <laughs> it didn't seem to fit the game at all. He went for a Blink Dagger, and they had... I mean, it wasn't just his fault, of course. I'm putting way too much blame on him, but they had, like, four Blink Daggers on their team. It really felt like they just needed some auras and needed to kind of group up and start ending rather than trying to make these big plays with four Blinks. It was just pointless. So uh, in a game versus the Silencer, once again, I really think that Blink Dagger loses a ton of value, hoping to see more of a Greaves-type build coming out from him, and I'm sure we will. See uh, a couple of right clicks exchanged here as Jabs and S4 bump into one another. Sumail also able to put a little pressure onto DJ, but Fnatic kind of invading enemy territory here. Definitely want to secure both of these bounty runes. See if EG react or if they just let Fnatic get away with it. Well, if EG can hold this rune, I mean, that would be sick for them because they'd be getting three uh, versus the uh, the one, but you know that Fnatic want to play as deep as they can here with the Grievous Greed on the Alchemist. Yeah. The EG level 1 skirmishing is maybe not the best. Jab's going to continue to press forward. And then Fly will go at it, and they are just going to hand this one over. Two bounties apiece. And yeah, DJ's still going on this harass. Very unlikely to get any sort of a kill here, but can still waste a lot of the regen that Fly has. Well, could it go back the other way, though? The curse has come out. S4 now putting in the damage, and similarly, they'll just let him go. Man, there's actually right. a couple more tangos on Fly, so maybe call that a bit of victory there for EG. But in the end, it's just... Uh, very minor trades going back and forth. And as you would expect with Team Evil Geniuses, well, Arteezy's in the offlane. This is what they always seem to do on the Radiant side. Uh, they have the blocks from the Shaker to try and offset a little bit of the denies that come from the Enigma. And you're hoping that's going to give Arteezy a nice spot to lane here. So it'll be a solo Alchemist against Necrophos in the mid lane. And down bottom, it's starting as a tri lane, but that'll quickly get broken up as DJ makes that rotation up top on the Earth Spirit. Actually goes rolling in onto Arteezy, but crits there. With the Fissure, kind of break things up a little bit. Arc Warden 
Taking some harassment from that orb of venom. Uh, no first blood, not even close to it. Yeah, they're just trying to give Artesia a solid time up here. And uh, Enigma, a, a pretty decent lane matchup, right? You don't have to worry too much about the Flux. You're always going to have your Eidolons, at least you hope so. There's no real AoE damage coming out from Artesia, so it's hard for him to deal with these Eidolons. He can't, you can see, they're just zoning him back off the wave right now. Mm -hmm. And relatively low HP hero there. Another Fissure comes out with Crit. Does connect onto Ice 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 as he continues to repel the likes of DJ. Down on this bottom lane, Lion S4 going to be up against Jabs and MP. So the farming Brewmaster versus the farming Tiny. S4 Brewmaster, pretty classic. Yeah, and the MP Tiny as well, though. I think that's a uh, hero that kind of fits his play style as of late, trying to be very aggressive and active and uh, getting a lot of blows back here. Yeah, Thunderclap on two. This curse doing some work. Jabs might actually be the victim of this first blood. Fly needs one more, and he's not quite going to have it. Now the Nightmare comes out. Jabs will be able to make it back. Close call on both sides, even S4 on a sliver of HP there after that exchange. Yeah, and the one thing we haven't really seen too much of, the mid. You heard the panel talking about it. Necro taking the edge in this matchup and already yeah. starting off 12-2 versus the 8-0, but you're expecting over time that uh, that's going to keep stacking up. Because Alki, you can't overrass this guy. Up top, Ice 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 taking a lot of damage here. RTZ still only level 2, so not a lot of kill power on this Arc Warden. Trying to abuse while Oops. DJ's out of the lane. Rolling Boulder forward. Now the stun. Crit's going to be in some trouble as the Malefist brings him low and DJ finds a first blood. Yeah, nice play there from DJ. I mean, it doesn't matter if you hit the roll or not. Just get in the right spot. But S4 at the same time. And the bottom lane will go down there to MP. So two for All nil right. here. Great start for Fnatic on these side lanes. And they need it. As, uh, as you just mentioned, the mid is certainly going in favor of Sumail, as one would expect. Quite curious to see how Abed builds the Alchemist this game. Not a popular hero in this meta, and uh, not really a standard way to go about it. What do you think is going to be the ideal? Oh, we're Radiance and Baby. It's the okay. only way to live life these days is uh, Fly will finally get a kill on Jabs. Looks like he's just playing way too, like, very aggressively this entire time. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of destined to fall. But uh, one of the advantages is going to be that whole concoction and uh, all the cooldowns and the damage and the Blink Dagger. That's kind of this new uh, class of Alchemist that's existed since the talent changes. And that's uh, very valuable for the Arc Warden. I can see why it's going to be good. Plus, the Radiant Mischance versus him, the clone, can be very sure. helpful with all the physical damage. But okay, we talked about how these, like, the side lanes were going well, but uh, Ice Ice is just starting to get some last hits now. He was actually stuck at three for a while there, so able to now catch back up to where TZ is. Yeah, and those denies uh, probably inflated from denying some of those Eidolons, I'd imagine. Our TZ 11 and 4 on the Arc Warden, so leveling out just a little bit. Still an advantage for Fnatic. Yeah, Been eyes on this mid lane. Sumail just hit level five. Yeah, you're waiting for that level six moment here. I mean, oh, he's yeah. got the level edge versus Abed here too. So that's going to drive Abed to the jungle. He'll just be storm spiriting up, you know, mm -hmm. run away before you're level six when there's some sort of a threat happening. Attempted fissure block from crit, but Ice 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 ends up on the other side of it. So he'll be just fine. Now DJ wrapping around the other way. We'll put some blows into Arteezy, but does not want to walk into those spark like rates. It's just like two of the absolute worst supports in lane. <laughs> Earthshaker versus Earth Spirit, you know. These guys, they don't play for the laning stage. They're one and done kind of guys. Yeah. Those early levels. Oh, down bottom. Avalanche onto S4, but call up not going to be there. This bottom lane has had a lot of damage traded back and forth. Oh, they're rolling in mid on Sumail here, oh. too. But yeah. it's just enough for Abed to run. <laughs> Only end up being a save play there. No concoction early on, no chance at aggression. He had the point, too. So, had he had the mana, he could have opted for it. Mm -hmm. Back towards this bottom lane. Mango gets used. Sleep onto S4. Roll across the way. The battle for the bounty runes as the dire courier gets picked off. We'll see Fly get brought down. Nice toss from Tiny. Secures the kill there. And now S4 on the run. Running low on options. We'll have a couple of stick charges pretty soon. 60 HP. He is going to be able to make it back. Yeah, all this dual laning hurting his uh, levels just, just a little bit. But. Uh, bounties will go two apiece, both Crit and DJ, securing two for their team. And Abed back here to a couple of stacks in the jungle that have been made up for him here. So yeah, that'll nice. get him up into the safety of level six versus the Scythe. 
I've rotated the supports here to the mid lane, hoping that, uh, assuming that, yes, Alk might not come back, but they're going to send someone for this wave, probably DJ. At least that's what roamers tend to do. Mm -hmm. So they're hoping for just a free pick on an Earth Spear here with a Fissure into sight. I think it is a little scary for the side of Fnatic, the opportunity cost of sure your Alchemist is getting some farm with these stacks in the jungle, it's what he has to do, but you're letting Sumail free farm on this Necro, and there's going to be a window where dealing with him is not going to be fun. He's number one on net worth by a huge margin right now. It's only six minutes in, but this I, is the ideal start for a Necro. I, I think they have some issues, though, like in terms of a snowballing Necro this game, because although he might get really farmed, and there's exactly what we expected. That Earth Spirit <laughs> crit DJ gets comes in, mid to get the wave, he absorbs gets Absorbs the roll, and easy Scythe kill. So. Yeah. Um, further that net worth lead, even more is now Bane's going to make the TP in. Great foresight there from EG. Like, they saw this whole play coming for like a mile away, and it's easy for us to see this kind of stuff as casters because you have this whole vision thing and you, yep. you kind of get the feel of how the game's going. But when you're actually in a Dota match, it's much harder to gauge exactly how it's going for your team. But the reason why I think it's a little difficult for the Necro this game, even if he's snowballing really hard, is because he has two cores that can't really match his same pace. Like, the Brewmaster, yes, you kind of want to fight early with split and everything, but you're then locked onto the split, right? You can't fight until the split's back every single time, so. There's no other really great kill hero either. Um, there's not a lot of like range burst or anything. You can't just like smoke up and go find a kill with a scythe or something. So I do think it's okay. going to give a decent amount of time for the Alchemists, just simply because of how much the Arc Ward and the Brewmaster are going to be needing. Definitely a delicate window for EG to execute there. They do finish off that Tier 1 tower in the mid lane though. So a uh, nice early objective there. And they give the last hit to Crit's Earthshaker. So he'll find some extra gold to get things started. Up top now, maybe some initiation on the Ice Ice Ice. This is a level 6 Enigma, so they need to be wary of Black Hole and possibly some TP rotations. There's going to be one. It's the Tiny as Earth Spirit goes rolling through. Earth Shaker in range of the tower. Gets off a Totem. And Arteezy on the run will get tossed up in the air. And trying to TP out. It might oh, actually no work. Way! He's made it. Oh, that's got to be infuriating. Crit with the big save with the Fisher. Somehow can't get inside that bubble from DJ. I could have sworn DJ was on the side of it, but I guess he was just a little, little step too short there. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. <laughs> Whew, at least he had the instant tip. You know, DJ, he can, he can roll with the punches on that one. Truth. He rolls in. Beacon of rolling. Yep, Crit trying to make it back to his shrine here. We'll have that cooldown available, but Avalanche catches him. It's going to be close. He will live through the burst damage. Now DJ pretty committed. Fly's going to make the rotation. Fissure connects on three heroes. DJ will go down first. Now MP and Jabs on the defensive with S4 in hot pursuit. Primal split 10 mana short. They will not be able to interrupt that TP. So only one. Oh, but uh, hey, it's Sumail. Hello. Oh, let's make it two. A double damage Necro with an easy Scythe. It'll be the end of MP. And that is one thing, is that before this Tome comes out, Sumail is just completely free in the mid lane. He's just been playing here this whole time. The supports can't really do much. There's not going to be any ulti from the Bane. I feel like that would be your best option, where he just kind of runs in and starts ulting the Necro and then you charge a concoction and everything. Sure, yeah. But uh, just not there at the moment. At least Abed is surprisingly keeping up in level somewhat. Yeah, I mean, his farm is fine. Uh, uh, they're guarding Sumail in the mid lane killed down there. bottom, but yeah, Bane, the double damage Necro is just too much. Gotta so love a support that can Fisher from Smoke. They were under a ward, smoked up there, and that's why he's playing so aggressively from jabs and uh, punished by the long range of Fisher. Mm -hmm. Did get a little pick me up down bottom. It was Ice 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 getting credit for that one. Uh, Helm of the Dominator gonna be queued up uh, as basically the first item for Enigma past the Soul Ring. Yeah, I think that was the item that was being brought up too uh, after that game as well. Just like this whole idea of trying to get better auras going. Um, Helm Greaves, so. Adjusting his item build accordingly so. And uh, the helm's just super nice for any sort of grouping plays. Yeah. Alchemist indeed going for the Radiance. Only 1,400 gold towards it, so still has a fair bit of farming to do. Oh, but he got the Mug Golem, so this is the dream camp. Uh -huh. Right now. Oh, look at all that Greal Greed. Mmm. Yes. Mmm. So that turned into Bulldog Black Cast. So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's ah. rubbed off on me. Oh! 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 It's a new form of play by play. I'm into it. I liked it. It's, it's I laughed. Stuff. Yeah. I cried. Crit going to be able to emotion. make it back up top and fly once again down bottom. Brought down by Ice Ice Ice. Bounty runes come out. Ichi get all four bounty runes. Although up top, Crit will go down for it. So across the map, Fnatic find two kills. That last bounty does get picked up by RTC. You knew. I knew. You had it locked down. No mm -hmm. problem. Uh, TP up from Ice Ice, though. There's three heroes closing in on him. My question, though, Trent, uh, who got the better of that trade? Four bounties for EG. They don't have the Alchemist, but Fnatic gets two kills. I mean, for now, it's it's still EG, right? It's uh, As long as Arteezy's not dying, life's good. That's mm -hmm. how I would be gauging this game right now. Yeah, and fair he's enough. just about to finish off the Necronomicon. 
just the beginning. As now Yule's Scepter also up on this Necrophos, who also finds his level 10. Puts a lot of pressure on chaining together some of these spells and concoction and stuff, too. So you might be able to just straight up dodge the concoction. And then that loses uh, a lot of the ability they're going to have to kill him at the moment. Black Hole is here. A couple of heroes still waiting for a split here from S4. And this could be a moment. How deep do they want to go on to Ice Ice Ice? They're very Ooh. grouped up. Black Hole on two. Fly manages to stay outside of it. Only level five on the Silencer. No kills quite yet, but now MPs rotated in. S4 gets off the split at the last what? second. EG still have their entire squad alive as they continue to commit. Reaper's Sight does get mitigated by the Nightmare, but Ice 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 still in a lot of trouble. Will go down, and they're going to continue to pursue on the jabs. Cyclone, they bring him down, and they should have the damage. It's a nice attempt from the Earth Spirit to keep jabs alive, but they'll finish him off with the Echo Slam. S4 probably going to go down for this as he comes back with low HP. Unlikely it's a deep dive for from EG. Too. He does have some stick charges here. We'll have another Fissure, TP, and 5. Definitely difficult to survive, but so far so good. Siege Creep <laughs> chasing him down. Kick one, toss the other, keep the chase alive. Magnetize used. Let's get the reset, but crit, he's still on the run. There's no tier 1 mid. Oh, and we got another toss. Oh, that's a Catapult, though, and not the Earth Spirit. Yeah, he might be OK here. That little Siege Creep's cute, but it's not doing a hell of a lot. And yeah, no options there with the Tread Swap either, it looks like. So MP can't get her. All right. A victory for EG, but all this trend is space for the Alchemist. 4K gold yeah, and now. Yeah, that fight again, though. I can't, oh. like, this was so close with the split. I thought he was dead for sure. Yeah. But uh, once again, as you point out, yes, Fly doesn't have six, but now there's Japs. So there's no follow-up grip there. Silence even comes out. Oh, it's so close. If DJ didn't even have the Magnetize either. He's also Look at that five. Death Pulse from Sumail saving S4 so he can get that split off. Beautiful. Uh, he was down, like, 30 HP on the Brewmaster. And then, Incredible. yes, a nice play. It's a nightmare, but... End. Yeah, just buys him a little bit of time there. All right, still this Alchemist, he is uh, now number one on net worth, actually surpassed the Necro. Even though EG have been taking objectives, you're not going to be able to outfarm this Greevil Greed monster. 600 gold off that recipe. And Ice Ice again returns to this bottom lane. He's killed Fly here a couple times, but uh, it won't be him alone. He's going to be bringing a couple of friends, and they're eyeing that level 11 Necrophos for sure. Bane still five and a half here. 13 minutes in, you gotta get these support levels when you don't get the tome. And they're both being scouted under an observer ward here. So Sumail now able to play aggressively because he knows they've moved back. Trying to keep their attention drawn here and as far away from Arteezy as possible. Mm -hmm. Likewise yeah. for S4 in the mid. Do manage to defend that tower, just barely out of deny range. Under the tier one, Ice 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 caught by the Yule Scepter of Sumail. Follow up Fissure from Crit. A little scary to move into the fog, though. Limited vision on the rest of Fnatic, so they won't commit for it. They've got very defensive wards right now from Fnatic. You see kind of like all across that line uh, of the map. They're not really planning on going anywhere, right? They're just hoping to farm up inside their own spots of the jungle, trying to hold their towers as long as possible, and kind of playing towards the south mist. EG just doing the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Arteezy farming away himself on this Arc Warden with the Necronomicon and the Midas uh, soon to be purchased. Another tier one down, EG. Now smoke up off the back of that, move into enemy territory. Arcane Rune will spawn. Be a nice pickup for Sumail, but they're just gonna bump right into jabs. The level six Bane will meet an untimely death as the site is deployed, and the dominating spree is secured for Sumail. I mean, they're not the best heroes, but they're making it work, right? Silencer and Earthshaker, it's kind of, they're just playing like any other support. It's just doing these like point blank stuns, whatever. It's all working out with the Scythe, uh, as long as they're fully grouped up. Maybe they don't have a two man hit squad because the heroes aren't quite right, but bring enough numbers and you can pretty much take anyone. Now Isis Ice comes in a little deep here. If there was a Scythe, it should be a little bit easier here for him just to delay for S4, but he's coming with his blink dagger and Isis Ice is just dead. Yeah, nothing you can do. Of course, uh, black hole available, but no teammates inbound and there is a global silence. So best to just let that one go and find a better spot in the jungle. Two farming tools picked up here, Arteezy's Midas, as well as Abed's Radiance. Yeah, but finally MP has a game now with this Blink Dagger. Mm -hmm. Been yep. waiting a while to get it going. Unfortunately, it's not quite in time to battle up for these runes. So again, and that is four bounties. Dagger. You see the top of the screen there, 11 bounties equaling 3,500 gold for evil geniuses. Now, Ooh. may I remind you folks, that is an alchemist on the enemy team. If you give up Ooh. those bounty runes, it's so much worse. And they're just completely stifling this hero. Suddenly, Sumail overtakes the Alchemist in this game. It's not looking too hot right now for Fnatic, but again, he just got the Radiance, so there is still time. They're trying to make a play with the Blink Dagger with the Earth Spirit. Should I be mean, an easy pick, but it is just Fly. They'll catch Fly, I think. <laughs> they EG got him. Kind of can okay with that. I, 
buys the one hero that doesn't really lose a hell of a lot from getting picked off like that. Uh, S4 also grabbed his Blink Dagger, though. We'll see Sumail moving into the mid lane with his Yules. Yeah. Not going to be able to find a kill there, but Jabs in a bit Yo. of an awkward position behind the trees. S4 hits him with a Thunderclap. Nightmare TP. There is no Reaper's Sight still on cooldown for 15. And he just Yules that Tiny, too. who was still a Blink away because he had one Raindrop charge left. So a little frustrating, I'm sure, there for Sumail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, missed opportunity, but not the end of the world. Up top, oh my goodness. pressure onto this tier Dota two. Plus 84% at this point. I mean, uh, I, I don't know if I go that high. I agree. I think they're winning when an Alchemist is down 4K, but still. See up top, Abed makes the rotation. EG with a lot of reinforcements nearby. Split, Echo Slam available. S4 jumps in, and Abed in a little That's bit more silence. forward than he DJ. Like. Still, S4 gets off the split, though, as Global Silence gets used. They want this kill on Abed. Crit just walks in, gets off the dunk, but Jabs is right there with the Fiend's Grip. Crit will actually be the first one to go down. Now MP joining the party. Sumail does have the Reaper's Sight, but oh Black Hole connects is... on the EG squad. Jabs. This was the moment that Fnatic had been waiting for. They bring down two, trying to finish off S4 as he goes back into Panda form. On the back side, they bring down Fly as well. Arteezy, the lone survivor, because he wasn't there. Dota Plus, what, what he's got now, man? I can't expect Jabs to somehow find a nightmare save on the Echo Slam coming through there. By all rights, he was dead. There is no way off it. Should have made it out of that first part of the engagement. Of course, he eventually does go down, but look at the damage he's able to output afterwards. So much of what yeah. Fnatic were bringing to the table provided by him. Wow. Incredible fight for and Fnatic. Even to start it off, too, right? DJ had that like, instantaneous silence to first save him, and that was after a self stun on the poor Alchemist. Like, I thought Abed was completely finished after the global silence into that. Yeah. All right. Well, now 70%. Uh, so, uh, some progress. They but... doubled their odds. Dota Plus, brutal. Well, as uh, the panel likes to say, you can't predict uh, bad, but you also can't predict just fantastic plays. I, I wouldn't even Very hate true. too hard on what EG did there. That was just a ridiculous prep there from Fnatic predicting how that was going to go. Now, however, following that, Sumail has just right-clicked a Blink Dagger. So he says, you know what? We get in that situation again. I want to have a laser to bring down this big old ogre with a Greeble on his back. That burst damage will definitely make that a little bit easier, though the Mantis style it's on the way. Still has an ultimate orb to pick up, but this train is rolling. Yeah, the map is going to be huge. Also Just a great black fly. hole from Ice 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 there. And yep, speak sure. of the devil up top, he's going to try to TP out. No way to interrupt it, and he'll be just fine. But um, yeah, a lot of patience from Ice 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 to get off that hole there. Yep. Uh, crit now has the Blink Dagger, too, on the Shakers. So. If you're EG right now, probably looking to go use this Scythe and the split in another 15 seconds. Uh, I mean, that top tier 2 is still very tempting. It's kind of the best part of the map to take over right now. Try and force the Fnatic to play on the bottom half of the map near their own triangle on the dire side by the Shrine, as well as into your own tier 2 bots so that you can try and control up the Roche Pit. Something that they can do very quickly. Um, honestly, from both sides, it's going to be pretty fast. I would say give the yeah. EG a little bit more since it's the damage of the Arc Warden. But the Minus Armor from the Alpha does help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both teams with pretty good skirmishing around the pit as well. Echo Slam, yeah, Bruce Flick, Global, pretty good. And obviously, uh, your black hole is king of the castle when it comes to fighting in close quarters like that. So, would definitely expect Roshan to become a focal point of this mid-game uh, mechanism. Also out on the Ice 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 Enigma. He's, uh, he's getting there. Greaves coming. Slow and steady. Certainly a necessity against the Silencer, though. Let's see if S4 even gets answered here. They have a... A helmed catapult from Ice 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 is going to pull the wave away, in fact. I like this. So, very nice. A little bit cheeky. We got Radiant Creeps running around the jungle at the moment. It's going to now be a pretty big wave. Where, where are you guys going? Some Wraith King skeletons up in here. Yeah, it looks like they'll just rotate past the tower, and uh, <laughs> they're, they're heading to the Tier 3s, so let's see how this one works out. I don't think that they're going to have a very good battle. You know, I, I don't like their odds here. Dota Plus could probably... Oh! And, okay, no, they they're going to run past they the can't Tier 3s. They got nothing. And now we're going to run into the tier fours. We're going right for the throne. Oh, wait, that's oh, wow. also immune. They're, and we'll they're just very brave. I like suicide the, into the enemy I like base. the thought, though. Mm -hmm. Go for the throne. Yeah, all or nothing, baby. That was like the most value use of Helm of the Dominator I think I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and now I say himself will make the trip up top. But uh, there's plenty of heroes here. And S4 just claps right in there. Gets some Eidolons trying to force some spells out. Falls a little bit short. I say he's still solo up here. Yeah, definitely cannot commit any sort of black hole there. Meanwhile, mid, that's just a Tempest double as Fnatic start to group up around this tier they one tower. Been hunting here for so long. 
EGR dodging it very well at the moment. Four makes the rotation, will bump into jabs here. Blink forward, thunderclap, but Nightmare puts him to sleep. He's now the go Fiend's grip. Can DJ get here in time though? He's global silenced. That means not only canceling the grip, but also making sure DJ doesn't have the follow-up. So he's forced to TP up in the top lane. And they might get the chase down onto Sumail. There's no blink dagger yet. He's got the gold on all of it, but hasn't had a chance to purchase it. Now Partizzi's already TP'd out. Nice use of the Yule Scepter for Sumail. Friends nowhere to be found Still though. So much control. Necro on the run. Unstoppable streak now for MP. Jabs with the tip. Yeah, kind of, I don't know, quietly getting to 8 1 and 0. Like he picked off Fly a couple times, of course, but MP looking a little bit like a Sumail last night in terms of the tiny. Uh, but this time he's getting more of those kills between like the 15 to 20 minute mark. It seemed like everyone itemized versus Sumail when he was playing the hero, where he was a little bit too tanky to burst down, but. He's still able to pick off a couple of these supports. Just not a lot of stats being purchased up there. Yeah, even though he's 8-1-0, and zero, his net worth isn't really out of control. I mean, I definitely wouldn't say that this Tiny is snowballing. Yeah, I think a lot of that, too, just because he is uh, kind of roaming around the map. Oh, <laughs> they have to toss jabs on DJ to break him out of the trees. Great teamwork. No, oh, yeah. Sometimes you got to help your pals out. Smoke rotation, though. Fnatic looking for something. Not going to be Roshan. exactly where they're walking up, though. Amp with the Spark Wraith, which does pop in the smoke, so he's going to know, but it's too late. Arteezy walks right into him. He was the first victim of this engagement. MP now in the front lines as they jump onto Sue Mail. It's Abed with the stun, and they've got the damage. Two big cores on EG brought down with a double kill for the Tiny. Fnatic hungry for more. Ice 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 has the black hole. Won't need it to find this kill on fly, and that makes it a three for nil. Yeah, and Crypt sitting back there. Can't find any sort of a dunk that's going to turn things around there. And well, Arteezy with the big brain pings it out. He's like, we should go camp here. Like, let's go put ourselves on that high ground. This is where they're coming. But it was just a little bit too late. Fnac moving at a faster pace than evil geniuses expect. And they're going to take that pace right into the Roche pit. Yeah, absolutely the right call. Global silence on cooldown for another 10. So it'll be up as soon as the silencer spawns. EG do have all their other abilities available. Roche still only at about 50% HP. I think if EG beeline it to the pit, there oh. is a chance that they can defend this. And it's yeah, all absolutely. All crit. They're so clumped. S4 jumps in, thinking about the split, but cancels it immediately as he sees Fnatic is already head back to friendly territory. Well, a, a good effort from Fnatic. I think their head's in the right place, but you know, even uh, better call to realize they didn't have the damage and get out of there before EG turned that one around. Yep, just relax a little bit there. They left some great vision behind too, which has not been deboarded here despite the double sentries uh, available on the cliff. So might need a, a courier or something coming over to take care of that for fly. Arc Warden now with his Mjolnir picked up. Also his level 15, Boots of Travel going to be coming out next. See Arteezy move all over that map. That Helm of the Dominator still coming in handy, scouting out Roshan. Struggling to bring it down, but Crit will finally give him the totem. Find a little bit extra gold for himself. Very sneaky ward there, too, on the little ramp. Kind of scouting them all coming in here. And they don't have any sentries left on fly. Probably some on the courier. Yeah, two coming on the courier. And they're going to try and take over the vision game around this Roche pit. Fly will still find it. Not sneaky enough. They get that tier two in the bottom lane as you know, Alchemist uh, makes the rotation back, working on his Octarine core. EG with a lot of good ward coverage around this part of the map. Obviously, uh, prioritizing control around the Roche pit. S4 moves in. I'll and take the softened up Roche here. So this is what they did last time too with the Arc War, and they just used that bubble. I mean, and you look at the, the EG hero. vision, and maybe this seems risky at face value, but they've got so many eyeballs down that it's actually not that risky. They, they know Fnatic aren't nearby, and they'll just finish fast. it off. Like, it's just ridiculous when the Mjolnir comes out on the Arc War. Yeah. No hope. No, that's uh, an Aegis now for Arteezy. I know Crit was a little unhappy with his gameplay then on Skywrath Mage. Felt like he wasn't contributing enough and didn't quite find those moments on the hero. And it seems a little bit this game kind of struggling as well. He hasn't really had those key Earth Shaker moments. I think he had really good rotations early on with Sumail, but he, he can't quite get those big dunks despite all this vision they've had here. So probably feeling the pressure right now. He's the one who's supposed to try and like close out one of these heroes before the fight even begins. No doubt. MP. Sort of posturing like he wanted to go for a pick, maybe onto that silencer again, but not going to find the opening. Instead, heads down bottom for this Tempest double. Of course, that is Shadowblade up on Tiny now. The Echo Saber just about to be secured. 
puts the burden on MP to try and find Arteezy if he's in the back lines there. See if he can just get an initiation onto him and honestly probably try and toss him somewhere towards his own team just for the finish, but uh, just the scouting possibilities of the Shadow Blade, of course, so important. So many sentries down on the map, and they're going to go for a bit of an awkward smoke here from EG. They're moving eastward and going to go like kind of through the river up towards these 25-minute bounty runes. So usually it's like right on the bounty rune timing, and they really want oh. the tiny down here. They don't want the Earth Spirit. Oh, DJ. Yeah, this is just... It's not the hero they want, honestly. Yeah. Will be an easy one for EG. And they'll actually just deploy the Reaper's Scythe. We'll give him a couple extra seconds on that respawn timer. As the Tempest Double head back, heads back to mid to shove out these waves. Uh, MP going to leave it, too. He's not just going to hop in there and go for a combo on it or something. Still a very tight game, though, Trent. I think Arteezy's done a really good job farming on this Arc Warden. He's only yeah. 3k net worth behind the Alchemist, and this Alk has had pretty much pick of the litter in terms of uh, farm priority. He's just been running around the jungle, still farming very well himself, but still unable to really pull away from the pack and have that true Alchemist presence that we've all come to know and enjoy. Nice 9 mid from Ice 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 on the Tier 2 tower, but only one outer tower remains for Fnatic, and EG are the ones putting on the pressure and taking control of this map right now. Yeah, the old Greedwell's Greed coming into effect despite having the same last hits. You've got like a 3k edge on the Alchemist. Now mind you, that could be a lot worse if they've been getting all the bounty runes this mm -hmm. game. Should be a lot worse, yeah. really. But Tier that two. Looks like this one will go unchecked as well. The Nurse Spirit in the Grave. Fnatic not eager to take a fight into an Aegis. And that'll be it. Only Tier 3s remain for Fnatic. One of the successful things for EG this tournament is it always feels like that they're getting an objective even with the, just the smallest pickoff. Like, they still know that this Earth Spirit doesn't want to buy back, and they're able to kind of focus, okay, what's like the easiest objective we can get that's just really not worth the effort from the enemy team, or, or the risk, really? Yeah. Absolutely. Especially with how much pressure's been coming to that bottom lane this whole game. Fnatic doing a good job, though, dodging the engagements, and kind of taking fights on their own terms uh, behind the Tiny or the... Bane if they can catch an initiation. Not giving EG these initiations that they're looking for. <laughs> you can see MP getting pinged out here. They're going to start putting some vision down, I think. Um, like in those areas where the tiny likes, but they're kind of where TZ is right now. You kind of get a ward down in there. You get a ward up around here. Because this is where these tiny heroes play. They just constantly try and cut the waves and then pop back into the trees, maybe go in the jungle for a little bit, pop back out. And never really expecting the vision in those areas. We often see teams go for that against them. About a minute 20 left on the Aegis for EG. Only got some pretty good value out of it taking those objectives, though. Seems unlikely mm. they'll be able to actually Fly, take a big team fight with Fly it. Fly really wants to smoke right now. He's just pinging the shrine over and over. Or he's saying he thinks that's where their smoke is coming to. He's put down some wards, some sentries. They're all kind of lurking around there. I don't think they have a smoke right now on EG. Yeah, at least not in their inventories, though. There's a double damage rune on S4. So they're just kind of predicting where their movements will be. Yeah, they're very concerned right now. They're just like, what is happening? They're scanning down on the bottom right of the map. And Artesia will just keep continuing to control that top lane with the clone. Now, the Core there. is up. It's only a 1,500 net worth lead now for this Alchemist. The gap is slowly closing. Yeah, and it's also moved over to the side of EG, which, yeah. honestly, when it's that small of a lead, it's kind of good for Fnatic. Like, if you go into fight right now and you're down net worth, that changes the gold formula so that you're going to get more gold out of this fight, true. even though it's like kind of an even game. Very true. Depending on the hero they pick off, that can make a massive difference. Look at this, Arc Warden. Butterfly secured now. Not an item we've S4 seen prioritized this much. very cocky right now. And Fiend's Grip even going to be used for that. They will bring him down. So just a quick pick on S4. MP, man. God like this game. 11-1 and 0. What do you think about this Butterfly, though? Pretty interesting choice for Arteezy. I think uh, the only other choice at the moment would be maybe Blink Dagger is pretty good on this hero in certain engagements. But I think in this game, Butterfly looks pretty good. Ooh, they Just almost catch MP. Farming. They do grab him with a dust. Crit there with the Fissure to block him out. And I think this Tiny is going to be done for. Those try to turn and bring down Crit, but they don't have the damage. Instead, Reaper's Scythe is deployed, and Sumail will secure about 700 gold for himself as he ends that 9x godlike streak. Okay, just a uh, pick for pick there. Brood a Tiny. I think uh, favoring EG ever so slightly. And again, right before the bounty rune. So they go three for one. You can see the top of your screen there. 79.50 for EG, 44.30 for Fnatic. Again, not what you want on the off game. Mm -mm. That is not how it goes. You guys don't know. He's got this thing, a uh, little multiplier there. Bounty rune 3.5. That's a nice multiplier. 
It sure is. One would hope that your bounty room goal would be up 3.5 times higher than the enemy. Well, level 20 talent on the horizon for Abed. Trent, you seem to be the uh, alchemist master between the two of us. What are you expecting him oh, to take? Oh, concoct. Concoct, 100%. Sure. Come on, let's go. Kill this Al or this Arc Warden. All right. Blow him up. So is that, that talent like, is the, just dumb. Is that the timing they want to fight around here? Double the damage on the concoction? I, it's definitely what you want before you go into an engagement. There's no question about that. He's just lurking a tree line to get it. There it is. No hesitation. No, that's not even a second thought for the cleave. No, there's, there's no thought about the cleave. This thing is just insane. Now, that means your minimum damage is 560. That's pretty absurd. Yeah, it does not scale with the duration or anything like that. It's the way to play this hero. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing you the merits. You can see how that's kind of good, right? You, you know, maybe going to max damage 800. It's pretty high. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage, and yeah. did I mention it's physical? Which has its ups and downs, of course, depending on the hero. Arteezy with his 18 armor gives himself about 47% physical resistance. As uh, Arteezy will tip Abed for killing his Tempest off. Man, really taking a passive turn in the last couple of minutes outside of a couple of one-off picks. Both teams being very cautious about this next engagement. Roshan, we'll see what that timer looks like in about 40 seconds. It'll be Rosh number two. Fly just wants level 15 so bad. He's spending all his gold on sentries. He does, still doesn't have the GPM talent on the downsides to silencer compared to some of these other supports. Mm -hmm. it takes a little bit longer to get it. Luckily, our, our, uh, Crit's kind of already maxed out in terms of he's got his Blink, his four step, and he's level, uh, well, he's past level 12. Pose really all you need just to make sure your Echo Slam is actually good. Fnatic now with a smoke outside of their base. See on the map, there's a line drawn to go down the mid. Still a tier one tower standing there for EG, giving them a little more protection in these kind of scenarios. And scan will hit, find some heroes. Limited angles for Fnatic. Who are we sending it first? Though. No Blink Dagger on Enigma, so certainly not Ice Ice Ice. It's going to be MP as he jumps in and catches Fly. Sumail able to survive for the rest of the burst, but Fnatic have a lot of reinforcements. There's the Yule Scepter. Mitigates the damage from the Concoction. S4 now put into the Nightmare as Abed reinitiates, jumps in on the Arc Warden. Lotus Orb helps make some space for Arteezy, but BKB, another Concoction from Abed. Crit blocks him out, though, as MP jumps in. They will catch the Arc Warden. Buyback already been used by Fly. Looks like a good fight for Fnatic. Still now the Fiend's Grip onto Sumail. Global finally used. Tiny getting stunned up, getting very low, but Abed still very healthy. He's got another concoction oh, coming. Reaper's good. Scythe will finish off MP, but there's the black hole. Connects on Sumail and finds the kill. It's a one for four plus the buyback. Could even be a dieback for Fly as they dive into the tier three and they'll find it. Four down, no buybacks available for EG. And love the way Fnatic played that fight. Just kind of slowly picking hero after hero off. They didn't get anything done really with the primal split. And yes, they do manage to pick off MP and he's been worth a lot of gold, but he got a fair chunk himself and he also output more damage than the Alchemist in that fight before he went down. So there's the AOK -okay with him. This is going to be a lot of damage here. There is no outer tower in the bottom lane, still a tier two standing up top for EG, but without buybacks, Fnatic can be able to do a lot of damage here. Yeah, this helm is putting in work right now. Everyone's attack speed going through the roof, going into these buildings right now. Guardian Greaves, too, helping people recover after the engagement. Looks like they didn't even take a fight at all. That Alk Illusion to pull the creep wave to the side. This will be melee barracks secured. And they will just back up. So Fnatic not going to linger around. Happy to get the melee barracks in 35 minutes. Let's take a look here. Yeah, perfect target first off, right? Get the silencer. That's nice. Yes, he's going to buy back, but Sumail tried to blink in to go for the save. He gets instantly stunned up. Silence fight gets kind of awkward, but they're all staying close to one another, keeping things grouped. At the same time, the real game, you see RT's doing a little bit of rap, but it's just Tempest double, so it's okay. Yeah, but he took Abed down pretty low. You can see the power of the Arc Warden when he's yeah. the one on the offensive, but it's all about getting in his face. But yeah, and that was the problem in this fight, right? Is that right they here. were all up in RT's face. He couldn't just sit back in the back of that fight, use his Tempest double, and keep throwing in all this damage. And if that's not there for EG, they're simply not going to win these engagements. Yeah. Decent dunk attempt, but they just didn't. Without the Arc Warden, EG simply don't have the damage. For yeah. Spikes. And I think that's really what this comes down to. Yeah. Well, you can see in the real game, Roshan now taken by EG. DJ, DJ kind of wanders his way in, and yeah, Arteezy finds a kill there, and that'll oh. be another Aegis secured. Well, at least uh, Abed's going to find the bounties this time. Got that going for them. That's something. I mean, even after all that, Fnatic only with a 1k net worth lead, 1k experience, 
They have not run away with this game quite yet. The Alchemist now looking for his Shiva's guard, starting Jeez. to run low on inventory slots. And Arteezy, he's still got the damage. That's now a Daedalus for the Arc Ward. These bounties really starting to close that gap, though. It's like 2k more from bounties they just got because this Alchemist finally able to find a couple. Objective gaming here for EG. Yeah, it's true. The Arc Warden uh, with the Aegis will make a massive difference in the next fight. Important to remember as well, 10 second BKB used by the Alchemist in that last fight. So still very healthy, but one of the hardest fights EG will probably have to take in this game with 10 seconds of immune Alchemist action. Yeah, they really couldn't find anything on him in that one. He's just like running around with concoction, even though the global's there, it doesn't matter because he has his BKB. Yeah. It was a nice block out from Crit, though, in that fight with the Fissure, even though it didn't get the stun on the Alchemist, still stopped him from pursuing. Scan, used by EG, does identify the location of Tiny. I like a lot of the uh, ideas behind this Alchemist versus the Arc Warden. Just someone who can kind of keep the pressure going the same way with these Mantas uh, spread across the map, keeping the lane pressure even versus this Tempest double, or at least trying to. I mean, even now it feels like they're kind of losing it, but that's because they're abusing this Aegis and playing so aggressively. But uh, on top of that, again, the Blink Dagger. Like, this is that big time in the game where it feels like you should be able to get on top of this Arc Warden and kill him. Might force Arteezy into a BKB next. Curious what he thinks to replace the, uh, the Midas here after his Aegis runs out. Yeah. MKB now joining the party. Lots of damage there. Yeah, the Alchemist does seem pretty well suited for it. He can shove out lanes and also just match up and farm against the Arc Warden. We were even just yesterday talking about, like, well, we've got Yuar on the, the Priestess of the Moon getting some farm, but they're letting Arteezy get all that space as well, and that's a pretty big mismatch. We saw how big that disparity became. Here, much more even. The two big boys, far and large, at the top of the net worth chart. Pretty big drop off after that. What's Sumail working on next? Uh, that'll be hard at Tarrasque for the Necro. Yeah, I've seen him just in the front line of these engagements, too. Uh, he's still lacking, or what's he got? He's got double dispel now with the Lotus and the Yules. Okay, that's definitely a good way to try and deal with the Spirit Vessel. Mm -hmm. And also hanging on to the cheese, at least for now. Very tense game here. I feel like both teams have been grouped up a lot more than usual, especially given how few big team fights we've actually seen. Lower bracket. Yeah, that's One true. series to send you to the arena. Get out of the hotel room, stretch your legs a little bit. Get in front of the live audience yeah. of 10,000 people, you know. That makes it easier, I think, right? Certainly some upsides. E easier if you're winning, at least, I think. Well, EG, tired of playing defensively. They are going to posture like they want this tier three oh, in the bottom this, lane. How uh, about positioning here from uh, no glyph. spot a Fnatic, though? Look where they are. They're going to spot this Courier coming through. Oh, that Courier is actually going the long way around. It, it, it feels something coming. Well, the Courier is going to be all right. They finish off that tier three tower. This is a good movement from Fnatic, but it's taking I mean, a while. It's, it's a little slow. And EG might be able to get barracks off this, even if they win a fight. Here's the initiation, though. S4 gets off the split straight away. They are going to try to bring down Fly, and they get it before he can global. No buyback there. Sumail isolated, but still alive. It's a clumsy fight for Fnatic. They'll lose DJ. He buys back now. BKB already been used by Abed, but having trouble sticking on a target. Sumail able to blink back defensively as on the other side. Jabs gets dove, and now the Enigma oh gets God, brought S4. down. S4 doing so much work in the back line. Even if he goes down here, you could feel his impact in this fight and has forced two buybacks out of Fnatic. They do hold on to the barracks, but EG take the fight. He just made so much space in that engagement. It was ridiculous. S4 just somehow getting back there. That fight was, by all rights, uh, supposed to be a disaster for Evil Jesus. Of course, Fly, uh, this global silence, uh, you know, this is the one hero you really need buyback on, but it was still on cooldown because of that last fight where he was eliminated first. So, created a good opportunity there for Fnatic, but they will end up losing it there at tier three and then. Oh, couple, we can uh, see it go on to Abed. He does not have a BKB dunk to start things off. They've got the Reaper's Scythe, and it's the Alchemist down. Now MP in some trouble, stopped by the Fissure. Crit's going to set this one up for his team, and though he does pay with his own body, MP will get finished off. Fnatic. Ooh, DJ will make it yeah, back, but brutal. I mean, still on the hunt. That was a little bit close there. The Blink trying to cancel a, a roll, but... Oh, I guess there's a replay now, too. From the start of that fight. Yeah, Fly he just spotted instantly in DJ. Look at that three-man rock, too, from DJ. This fight, it's kind of surprising that it went so well for uh, EG the way that it did. 
again, we can really just give all that credit to S4, and I think that's a fair thing to do. Yeah. Look at him just zoning them back into the base. Completely repels the Enigma, and then the BKB to Abed. This is nine second BKB, but he can't even stick on it. Look at him go. He's <laughs> still nice, 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 getting kills. Now getting back into the real game here. Barracks exposed. This Alchemist does not want to buy back. If he dies again after that, he'll be in the grave oh, for so RTZ. long. The Black but hole. RTZ in a lot of trouble. Ice 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 ready to line it up, but they don't even need it. Now the Fiend's grip onto Sumail. He's going to try to make it back. Whoops. The Black Hole catches only one. Although oh, Sumail walks back into the event horizon. Not ideal, but there's the silence, the blink back, and the buyback now from RTZ. DJ locked inside of the trees. will be able to roll down to the low ground. Not sure who's taking the victory here. Now the buyback <laughs> well, still forced chasing by MP. the Alchemist. Sending him back, trying to get some damage onto these buildings. Tempest double still there, Sumail as well. Economic damage done to both sides, but Fnatic feeling like they're on the back foot now. Sumail, Sumail blinks forward, finishes off Ice Ice Ice, and now this could be a dieback for Abed. He gets low, knocked backwards, but DJ goes down next. Now MP running low as Arteezy is laying in a lot of damage. He falls, four down, no buybacks. EG might have actually just closed out this game. They just went for the jugular in a rather risky moment there. But they know. They've realized that all these buybacks, they've been spent at this point. And no one else is coming back from Fnatic. It is all bet against the world. And that's it. They're going to go all in, and the GG's called. Fnatic, no, they can't stop this push. And after a very back and forth mid game, EG able to win yet again with the Arc Warden and shut down the out. They play so well around this hero. This hero is just like pure raw damage for the most part. Yeah, he's got a little bit of help there with the old bubble and stuff. There's some cute plays. But in the end, they're just sending this panda in, helping to disperse the side of Fnatic, make sure their fight can't be good and organized. Mm -hmm. And that Sumail's playing the same way, right? Like, he's playing this Necrophos. He's just blinking in their faces, throwing out death pulses. Yeah. I mean, you saw him run back into the black hole just to give some more HP over to S4 and help save him there, right? Yeah. So, whew, our Incredible. I, I, the movements from EG that game, though. Early on, they found those yeah, rotations sure. with that kind of awkward support duo. As you mentioned, Sumail had a great start in the lane, and Arteezy, he lived up to the expectations heroes, and farmed like a madman again. Heroes that just end the game when you're winning. Terribly. Eric Warden. You know, yep. just get rid of them. Get They're rid of them. They're too good. Shadow Shaman, even. Ah, all right. Panel, what, what did, Eric game Warden. one's all done. Panel, what do you got for us? What happened? One of many questions we shall ask to our panel members who are ready to break down game number one, a victory for evil geniuses. Uh, it wasn't all easy, though, chaps, was it? I mean, it, it, they played well, great team fight. Art Warden, obviously, very good, but it took time. It took a bit of time to get there. Yeah, I think the only difference this game was he was against Enigma in lane, so he didn't have the best start, a little stunted on his uh, item progression. But lo and behold, he out or kept up with an alchemist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, That doesn't exactly seem fair. Good hero. That was uh I mean he played really well, but he got he got a lot of space from his two teammates from uh from Sumel and from S4. Like yeah. they literally just every single time getting to that back line seemed so difficult for Fnatic. They just yeah, just went in. Crit also had some really good defenses. Fly I think got caught out of position a couple times, but overall they're able to just like control the map and I mean this this hero just seems so ridiculous how much damage you can do. I don't know. It's like a little confusing watching games with like this Alchemist versus Arc Order matchup. Like I don't really know exactly what's going on like how the fights work they like uh, you know they're farming quite a bit like they trade a couple of fights and then all of a sudden like a team loses Th that's kind of how i feel i don't know fanatic we're like doing really well at some points and then you know like we see the highlight and then we come back and like F eg killed someone they're taking roche like, it, it was a very back and forth game like uh, it didn't look too clean from anyone but yeah like, it wasn't until the end really that we, we kind of got the the yeah. idea that EG were going to go ahead and win this game. Yeah, but yeah, you see, but when they end the game, like it looks like they stomped them. Yeah, like, that's just yeah. what it looks like. So, like, there's obviously something going on with these heroes here. Mm. Is Ark Warden now tier one? Do we do we have to put it up there with the Morph from the TB, it feels the like PL? It. If you're an Ark Warden player, yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah, at, yeah, at least versus EG, right? I think you have to like if even if this Shaker's there, I think Fnatic should just open with the PL. I, I don't know. It, it feels like this hero, this Ark Warden hero, just takes over the game if he doesn't have like this like actual straight up counter to him. And it, but it isn't it isn't just that hero though, it's the combination and the team play behind it as well. Because Samao was in there a lot, the brew was in there a yeah. lot. It, it's not it's not just it can't just go in and kill the game like he did with the Ember Spirit Samao the other day. Yeah. That's true. And I, I I like I wonder if uh, PL counters are Gordon. Like I Well this like is I, this is the question now. I isn't feel it? like I doubt it. Yeah, like, and like yeah, maybe, several I mean, teams maybe. have tried different 
theory crafting and they've thought, no, 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 we can beat the we can beat yeah. it the arc by doing this. And this is another one. This is another attempt at it. Yeah, I think every hero has had some flaw. Like Alchemist, yeah. I think the issue is, is that it basically gets free farm to the enemy mid laner. So their Sumail is very easily able to make all the space in the world yeah. that Ar uh, the Arc Warden yeah. needs. That's like, like the Lycan didn't feel very good here earlier because it's like such a timing based hero, and eventually they have four staves. I mean, you might be right. I don't know. Like, because no, the PL, like you build Mjolnir, right? And yeah. like you're gonna be out farming him most likely, and then you, you can like go with Shivas or something and. I just find it fascinating. Yeah, we're, at the end right, of a, we're at the end of a very long patch that's been around for a very long time, and suddenly these guys bust out the Arc Warden, and it and it's got you all flummoxed. Was it? Was not, it not just all the teams? It's got everyone. <laughs> was it nerfed since Ti, TI at all? What Arc Warden? Arc Warden was no, he touched? So. No, he's not been touched. Because like OG, they picked it. Yeah, right? they picked yep. it a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did, they did. Yep. So maybe I people just, just, think just it forgot. Was the pace of the game when Ti was much faster. You had these like weavers, these Ursas, like yeah, offlane yeah, the too. That's true. Like these yeah. really like high pressure early game. Like yeah. buy a blink on Ursa, who's just gonna kill you. At, like as an offlaner. But it's and also the narrowing of the pool, isn't it? Because yeah. we've, we've talked about the three the three carries right now, which is the, the dominant three. And people are trying to find well, where's where are the other ones, and if these three get banned, and we've seen TB and banned a lot first phase. Now we've seen PL banned, we've seen um, the Morphling banned as well. So that in the end, you kind of go, well, we need to find something else. Yeah, is that not just a result of the the, the kind of changing meta? I think so. The top ten meta heroes from TI all got nerfed, and when the good heroes change, the good heroes that are good against the good heroes. If you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm no, still I, there. I, I think I'm following. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, yeah, sometimes it's the, the circle of Dota. Yeah, hero's good if he's good against what's good. That's all that matters. Like, That's even true. if that hero's very all average. Right, now I'm lost. Okay, if it counters all the three best carries <laughs> in the game, then it's going to be a good hero. Like, uh, there's. Uh, yeah. Like, every hero in the game has natural counters, and if all those natural counters suck, then that hero becomes a good hero. I just don't know. Wise I words, man. All these heroes <laughs> I'm thinking about, I'm just like, yeah. They can't match. This Arc Warden's pace, like the way that he farms, like even if there's yeah. this hero that is a counter, I'm thinking like maybe you have to go for some like Magnus with like a PA or Magnus with PL or Magnus with Life Seal, like yeah. these heroes that can just kind of try to match the farm, but no, it's, I don't the, know. The problem if they're is good. the double Midas, like if they trade the map, right? Yeah, like he has the double Midas. No, you have to chase and kill him. Like you need, like the thing is that an ultimate counter to a hero is a hero that goes to that hero's lane, wins the lane, and then wins Fair. in the game. And like I don't, th I don't think that a hero really exists versus Arc Warden. Like you can beat him in lane versus these with enigmas. Just didn't put three in the mid. No, kind of. No, they need. They need. They need to pick Storm Spirit. Mid. I okay. Think. Well, we and were talking about need, Storm in the last game. Yeah. Then the Storm Spirit the, can't get crushed in lane, and uh, he has to keep sipping on the Arc Warden. Okay. And don't, you can't just let him free farm. But no. is, it, is Storm even a good hero? Yeah, I mean, we've been saying how bad it's been. What if he just gets double X and then you're just like, oh yeah, my yeah, god, but this no, but you can't let him get to that point, right? Yeah, like, I guess that's true. It's it's too much. Like you need to be uh, equally fun. Like All right, I think I think we've come to the conclusion, um, ladies and gentlemen, of you watching at home, that you just ban Arc Warden. It's as simple as that, right? No need to counter it. Just ban it out in the first phase. We'll uh, see. Yeah, this game for sure. Yeah, this game for sure. We'll see whether Fnatic do that in game two when we return after the break.
Welcome back to the Kuala Lumpur Major, game number two just around the corner, or rather game two's draft just around the corner. And our panel are all ready to give you their thoughts on what we might expect from game two. We've been discussing in the break, as you probably heard us just before the break, how do you counter the Arc Warden? Well, the easiest way of countering it, gents, is ban it. Yep. Get rid yeah. of it. EG, EG took first they pick. They took first pick, yeah. I mean, we were making Did the point in the break, weren't we? It was like, well, if you've spent all night theory crafting yep. on how to beat the Arc Warden, and that's what you've come up with, and it didn't work, you've now got 10 minutes to come up with another version, and that's not going to work, is it? Yeah. I don't so mind. Ban it. I don't mind them like going for it one game though. Yeah, like, no, that's okay. Yeah. That's fine. I, I, I'm not. I'm not criticizing them for doing it. I'm just saying you've had a long time to think about how you would yeah. approach it and know that they're probably going to pick it first, and it hasn't worked out for you. So, do you tempt fate and try and make some tweaks and changes to try and do it again, or, you, or do you just get rid of it? Yeah, I feel like EG hasn't looked like too smooth this entire tournament. They beat Forward Gaming both games with Arc Warden. <laughs> yeah, and, and like, don't let <laughs> yeah, don't let them go through the entire tournament with right. one hero. At least no. make them beat you with something else. The Arc Warden Major. How do you think about, uh, I just was remembering another hero that I saw a secret do a bunch actually versus it is the Monkey King and you just hunt him. I think Forward yeah. Gaming tried that. I Did mean, they try it? I mean, well, they, they, but they put it in lane. A, yeah, well, that was with like Pugna. <laughs> no, no, the funny thing is because the, Ar the Arc Warden is mid lane then, right? And then Monkey King comes there with a normal Venom expecting an Ember. And like, yeah. he just gets out lane. Mm. And I don't know how that lane is supposed to go, but I don't think it's that good for a Monkey. Because I, 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 I think I saw Secret do it at the Singapore line, and mid one destroyed the Arc Warden in the whole game. He but just that was also him. a mid one Monkey King. Yeah, and he's a bit of a crazy good. person with it, too. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of anything here. Really. What, what about a good Timber? Yeah, you were mentioning that before the break. Yeah. Yeah, I was just yeah. wondering because how they match up in lane. I'm yeah, like, it's not great, but it's, the it's, bu it's the bullying angle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because it's possible, right? Like, if he's safely in Arc Warden, then you might be able to put pressure. But I'm just thinking later on. Like, you come there with your Timber, so you get one stun, you get like a billion spirits on you, and like, there's just two clones hitting you. I'm not sure. All these heroes, I feel like it also has to be a good hero for the game. Yeah, like, yeah, that's just true. against Arc Warden. That's very true. Yeah. So yeah, it's like, if it's a good Timber game, then it's probably it'll probably work. Yeah, mm. and then. The, uh, uh, <laughs> it's like has to be okay. Yeah, like, so, like so about it. Jens, so we've agreed. Bad. It hurts. It hurts yeah. my mind, man. <laughs> it hurts my brain. <laughs> it for now. Will they really just first pick it overall? You think? I, I think they will have given. They've got it first to pick yeah, for the right? second game, right? They pro yeah, they have first pick yeah. for this no, game. No, but if you don't have a really cool idea, like I would just pick Nyx at this point. But like, I wouldn't want to try it one more game. Like, I don't want to go. Right. Out yeah. Like, someone's done it. Right. Like you said, yep. two games of Arc Warden in a row, and yeah. you just lose. Like, God, no. just ban it, please. Yeah, figure something right now. Mm. Think about it later. Yeah, draft uh, underway, and uh, we will see, I guess, yeah. whether I they whether they decide to. I think you probably just ban it, and you also, I, I think I should just, they should just give him other stuff other than Enigma. He's had really rough times on the hero. Sure, in that game, he was versus, like, global and all that, but I just, I like seeing him playing other things. What about, okay. like, Pangolier? Might be decent against Arc Warden. Which is a great hero for Ice as well. Like, gets up in his face, team fights, I'm just wondering, I think the lane push. would be... Terrible for uh, Pangol. Okay, yeah. Like that's always Pangol's problem, though, right? It's like the lane. Yeah, no, be but it's hard. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, though. Like, you can, I'm just thinking of this stupid. I mean, EG looks there. like they're you setting up. Fran, you were mentioning right the, the the centaur as a support. Yeah, I think centaur in general, gap just like closing? the gap closing idea yeah. of getting uh, against Arc Warden is really good, and centaur makes your entire team gap close. So, I feel like that could be pretty good. I mean, we'll see. Are fanatic? Maybe they leave both centaur and Arc Warden, and then like. I think EG will take centaur. Yeah, mm. and then they get Arc Warden, but then. Yeah, and you know. have Centaur against Arc Warden. I don't know. If, if, they, if they get. <laughs> it looks like they're setting up Arc Warden already, though. The Weaver, I think, is pretty good against it. The Broodmother, Brood obviously. Broodmother is definitely good. Right? Brood's the best, but I don't think. Yeah, I don't think they'll have a Brood versus Fnatic. What about, how's Meepo versus Arc Warden? It should be good. Oof. That should be good, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the other one I was thinking about. That, I think that's why they also picked the Shaker, too. <coughs> they, like, block picked yeah. Yeah. PL, Ooh. Meepo. Okay. Huh. Enigma banned by Evil Genius. Oh, nice. there okay, they go. took okay. it out. But this is yeah. like an easy and first. Centaur. EG loved this. Like, yeah. they, yeah. it's so easy for them. Yeah. Like, I, I can't believe they rather play versus Centaur than Axe at this point. Man. Hmm. Why didn't I say Centaur for my sneak peek Evil, for this tournament? Man, Evil, Evil Geniuses have been no balls, so man. good with that Axe, though. Yeah. And they yeah. do first that's, pick it no, as well. No, that's true. That's true. No, EG are getting to this point where they're always going to feel comfortable drafting. Yeah. Because they've gotten too many heroes at this point. Yeah. They have this. They've certainly got some first first phase pick yeah. heroes, haven't they? Got yeah. plenty of those. Nine, Can't ban them all. Nineteen out of twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It started the day off with uh, eighteen out of twenty-four, and it's already won another one today as well. It's the uh, easily the biggest winning hero with any um, with heroes picked more than ten times at this major. I, I just don't like this tiny. The only close one, by the way. Is Arc Warden? Is Arc Warden. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think EG will take Man. the Shadow Shaman here? That's I love that Shadow Shaman Centaur versus the Morphling. Yeah, it it was it actually sick by TNC. It was so good. 
I think it's super good. Uh, I don't like this. Is probably gonna be a support time, right? Yes. I mean, MP literally went godlike or whatever yeah, in the last game, I was and gonna it's say still. It's no, it's it has to be more of a purpose. Oh, yeah. all right, mm. TV's in the pool. Yeah, Man, it's been at least like three yeah. games since I saw this here. I'm excited. And, th and this is the this is what we call the circle of life in Dota, right? Yeah. Yep. You, another one rises to the top, and then the one that gets forgotten about, not banned, comes back in again. I mean, uh, and just still annoys me. Like we see here, we have a morphling. Like, oh, that's a strong hero. And then we have terribly. Like, oh, you, you. And then we look at this. <laughs> and then we have a centaur and a tiny. And I'm just looking at it like, ah, oh, <laughs> I'd rather have this centaur. Like, yeah. There's no question. Like Morphling Terrorblade, you can argue like, oh, blah, 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 blah. But the other two, I, I don't know. You're in a monologue, sir. So AG, get rid of... <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it's really <laughs> getting tired of just tying it like this. AG, get rid of uh, PL, Zeus, maybe? Uh, I don't think you... I think you leave PL because they already TV. have the Morphling. Okay. I'm fine with... So get rid of I'm fine with Necro. Yeah. These, like, heroes we've talked about with second pick, you pick them third, just the strong laners. So you, Necro's a good example. Especially against your two melee heroes. Mm -hmm. Silence of Band Outs have been a popular AG pick. Do they ban like the Bane or do they just not care? Bane or Phoenix? Yeah, actually, they Phoenix don't seem pretty... to care too much, do they? About either, actually. Yeah, they banned the nice for yeah, they ban the Silencer for Fnatic, so I think they're setting up a Phoenix third. Yeah. I think they I think they probably have to take it third, too. I think EG would kind of want it, too. Feels pretty nice for his tiny. Leave both guaranteed getting one. Five seconds hmm. remaining. That is an option. Do you ban Tinker or Zeus here? Do you care? I don't know. The rotation begins. <laughs> oh, which is that? Is that a tie ban? Yeah, it is. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course it's a tie ban, Fold. What were you expecting? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> oh, I have a screen right here. I'm looking all far away and I'm like, I can't see the hero and it's like right in front of me right here. Yeah, I mean, we've actually seen some Tide picks. Not too much success. <laughs> I just yeah. had one good game. I think one or two good games on it, and then the other game I saw him on it was really rough. He was versus mm. a Brewmaster, and I was like, oh, no. Yeah, the other day when they picked it into an Axe, I'm like, Axe has one of the few non-dispellable stuns in the entire game, and you picked Tide. That was a little weird. We've seen quite a bit of that, though, in drafts, haven't we? At this major, I feel... Just we're, comfort we're, zone picks over... Well, they've just ignored the fact that there were two counters in the game yeah. and just gone ahead and picked whatever they wanted because they prefer playing with it or something. Yeah. Almost like they're ignoring the other team's draft. Yeah. And you have to do and that it's, And it's had a bit of... It's had a, it's had a weird reaction because sometimes yeah. the team of them won and so yeah. you go, well, that's weird. They just won a load against, uh, against a load of counter. That doesn't make any sense. And then other teams have actually just bombed out because yeah. obviously the counters have been too strong. To be fair, in the fifth game of TI Finals, I think that was the... <laughs> most like important game in all of history of Dota, and, and both those teams definitely just completely yeah. ignored the other Absolutely. teams. Absolutely, yeah. At just that point, at that wanted. point, the meta is like, well, we have no idea what's going on anymore. Yeah, these, yeah. these guys are putting spin and all sorts of weird and one of Magnus, and I don't know what's going yeah, on I mean, anymore. Yeah, OG Strat was literally, what's your favorite hero for each individual? Yeah. I mean, it was the same thing for OGD though. They're like, yeah. all right, maybe he's just playing like Tiny and Kunkka because he just wants to buy these strength items yeah. on every single hero. Yeah, Bane's a pretty obvious choice, yeah. but I didn't think they should pick it. I don't and the so Undying good. as well, by the way. They had Bane Tiny in the last game, too. Yeah, they did. I mean, they... I feel no, like Bane's the most popular hero I've seen pick third on second pick. Like, you just I mean, like they're a strong later. Let's keep in mind, they they were in the game for long periods of yep. the first game. There wasn't technically nothing particularly wrong with their lineup, was there? No, their lineup was kind of okay, actually. Yeah, so I, I think it's a it doesn't make too, fo too far away from what they did in the first game. No, it's a li little different now, because they have Morphling instead of Enigma. And yeah. Enigma is, like, one of their most powerful team fighters. So now you end up with this... Like Morphling, Morphling could, with the Terrorblade, I don't they know. They could go they back for the Void, though. They could void, yeah. Maybe they, they want to do one of those Zeus Tinkers, like they kind of count. Yeah. I think Zeus so is so. still in there. PL is still in there. I think Phoenix is look, looks so pretty mm. decent right now. For What's your five here, Dazzle? Oh, yep. Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it. Last Love second. It. Yeah, I, I, You got it. You got it. ching I, I just Dazzle Terrorblade. Dazzle wasn't picked much because Terrorblade wasn't being picked. And there's, there's the Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah, the other side, yeah. That's uh, exactly what they need. Yep. That makes the tiny a core again. No, I think they're gonna do core phoenix. Oh, do you think they're doing core phoenix? Yeah, I think okay. Ice is gonna play this phoenix, and there's gonna be. A I think it's too good of a Lena game. Oh, for EG. For EG, yeah, I think they almost certainly pick Lena here. Yeah, no, they should. Especially, I mean, then they should. Yeah, no, they should pick the Lena against Phoenix and, and the Morphling. I don't know. That depends though. Like I've heard, like the Morphling versus Lena matchup mid. That's going like, I'm not sure. Like oh, who, okay. who wins that? Some people tell me Lena wins for sure, and others like, yeah, no. I, I, if it does not win, one. then I do not want you to pick it. I was under the <laughs> yeah. impression that it does. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. I've heard different. It does all there over the 76 matches. 12 picks so far at the Major. Five wins.
That's actually not too impressive at all. No, his ultimate feels way worse for some reason. The he has also been played as a core as well. <laughs> that one he game, was right? played as a core. Yeah. He sh I mean, uh, let's not do that again. No. <laughs> yeah, but it's also maybe. He was doing pretty well. He until could just go for 20, for, until for 20 minutes. I was going to say, yeah, first 20 minutes when he got left alone, sure. Yeah, Only the Murano Murano was standard Murano. It was one or the other, I yep. felt. I mean, yeah. the only spooky thing about this is you might end up with Murano versus Morphling mid, which I don't think is very good for I Murano. think you just do Murano Centaur, honestly. On the off lane? Yeah, I think yeah, four I position think so Centaur, too. three position Murano. Okay, but so what do you want for mid then? Do they run it like that, though? Because they, they, they don't have last pick, right? They, yeah, they, you, do they, they usually pick. put Murano with Smile, right? Yeah. Smile is usually the Murano in the team. Can they still TA? Five seconds mm, never mind. No, they can No, TA gets dazzled terribly. It sounds no, no. I mean, TA for EG. Oh, for EG. TA is really good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Works pretty well. Gives him more rush. Are they gonna ban the other one? They still ban Lena. I was gonna say that makes it even better. I mean, they could like Huskar two on EG. That would be pretty cool. Oh yeah, with the dazzle. It was potential last time. They're gonna ban the Meepo just in case. I'm down for some Huskar. Do they take the Huskar here? Is Sumail a Huskar player? I, I could, don't I recall Huskar. seeing him play a Huskar, but that doesn't mean he hasn't. I'd be fine if they do something like Brew too, but I think just some team fighter again. I'm just worried about this Mirana versus Morph mid. Yeah, I would prefer this Mirana to be offline. Yeah, personally. We're assuming that, that Centaur is the support. Fanatics I think it's the. <laughs> Ooh. No, it's not. Ooh. So we. Uh, I mentioned That's this at the start noble. of the tournament. See, I mentioned this go. at the start of the tournament. Lion yep. against the Morphling. Yep. So it's a Marana mid lion centaur off lane, core lion. No. No. Yeah, probably no. core lion. No. Doesn't have the shadow shaman no. effect with the eighty mm. damage or whatever. Definitely not. Yeah. So like, if you would want to put this morph mid, like, what do you pick then? For carry. Ten you're, you're playing versus a. You don't know, like either centaur dazzle or. Bottom lion. Back, back for the Alchemist? The Alchemist is really bad versus Terrorblade. Is it? Yeah, you can't even lane the Terrorblade against it. It has like 11 armor and you just way out damage him and Reflection's good all game. Mm. Uh, Unless, of course, they go down the path of ignoring exactly what EG have drawn. There's still a PL, <laughs> right? <laughs> you could also do Isis, yep. Isis Hero here. Mm. Or, you, I mean, MP's played Tiny Plenty. Yep. He does, yes. He won one game. I would say that was the Orc Warden winning that game. But I'm really not sure, actually. I just don't know if this Phoenix is going to be playing offlane or not. Yeah. I'd like it to be Isis I mean, Hero. That's, that's oh, the, yeah. That's I the question core here, Phoenix isn't it? Being yeah. yeah, I'd yeah. like it to be a core Phoenix and, like, being tiny supports. Oh, so you would want to pick, like, a, what is it, Brewmaster, Panda? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good, this game, sure. honestly. It though. feels nice. They're, they're definitely thinking too. That was my next guess. <laughs> Stolen away from S4. Yeah, I don't hate yeah, it, but I don't love it. it. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's, it's nice carry size. tiny again, yeah. Then, right? Yeah. yeah. It is carry tiny, empty tiny, and uh, ice 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 mm. will go on the Underlord. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's your drafts, boys. Yeah. That was a, an interesting draft. We've got our answer to the Arc Warden, which was basically ban it. Has it influenced which way you'll go? We'll start with the send PSJ. I'm gonna be a I'm gonna make a ballsy pick and go for Fnatic this game. I think Terrorblade's gonna have a tough time playing his hero this game with the Phoenix Morphling under Underlord. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm feeling I do feel similar to you, but I think if the Dazzle ends up versus this Underlord in lane, it might just get too rough. And then later their team fight is like tiny stun into the egg and they have center ult too. So I, th I think Aegis should be able to. Honestly, that Morphers part of mid, though. That's the biggest thing that I'm <laughs> tough one, isn't it? I'm going to go with. Uh, yeah. uh, let's do <laughs> EG. EG. <laughs> sound <laughs> effects <laughs> on point today. Yeah. Let's just do EG. Yeah, oh, we, we just tie a young hand next time to do all the sound effects for I the show. Like, uh, I don't like the... Lion as a hero, but I think this Dazzle is so good versus Underlord. No, I don't know. There's Morphling versus Mirana. Uh, I mean, production is going to put EG up for me no matter what, anyway. Well, of course they are. I'm going to go EG. Yeah. yeah, it makes no They're difference. They're going to do it so. anyway, right now. Of course. I mean, the former EG player, the official owner of the fan club, mm. has gone EG.
we're really shocked here in the studio. Uh, time to head over to our commentators. I uh, wonder what their thoughts are on game number two. We asked gents, what do they do about the arc warden? They said, uh, uh, they said ban we it. We are here. Yeah, you, there you are. Yeah. Uh, they said ban it, and they were right. We have got the arc warden banned, but have Fnatic had the better draft, do you think, this time? I'm worried about the timing of the Morphling versus Terrorblade. We've seen what that Terrorblade can do early, break these games wide open before the Morph really comes online. I, I'm favoring EG here. Mm. You're into okay. it, right? I'm into yeah. it, dude. I mean, it's, it's a dazzle. dazzle. I'm, yeah. I'm feeling, yeah. Boys, I'm feeling yeah. some NA bias. Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah, I've got like an NA panel out at bar one. No, I, cool. I see. I'm going with BSJ. I'll take for that. <laughs> I'm into it. Okay. Yeah. I'm biased <laughs> towards that NA man. Uh, so I'll yeah. agree with that. <laughs> All right. All right. Good stuff. Take it away, gents. Oh, yeah, thank you thank, very thank much, you. Paul. Yeah. All right, Trent. Um, so do you think you believe in this Underlord? You're not worried about him uh, falling victim to the I, dazzle I think the in the lanes, lane? I think Pi brought up a really good point. Yeah. Um, if, depending on the lanes. But I also, at the same time, if we're talking lanes, mid lanes can be the one to watch. So take us into it. Come and see. And. Uh, find out how Abed will do here because indeed he will be heading to the mid lane and okay. the, so the question is you're talking about this dazzle maybe being in lane versus the underlord but maybe he might have to come to like the mid lane too and they just try and bully Abed early so very curious to see what the setup's going to be here yeah me too um I think EG just have a draft that fits this really nice tempo they can play around this metamorphosis very well you've got S4 on the centaur who will be able to get a reasonably timed blink dagger this game I think and kind of play that initiation role break up these fights I think Lion and Dazzle are also a great support duo because they really make up for what the other one lacks Dazzle has great saves some good damage but True. not really much in the terms of control and Lion well he's all about control yeah so. control and damage he, he's got that that's for sure so that'll be uh one thing Abed will have to watch out for, you guys have all seen some games of the Sun Strikes just kind of blasting a Morphling away in the jungle depending on the vision. It's felt like EG have been winning the vision battle so far in this series, taking a lot of the map over with Wards in game number one. If they can do that again here, especially in the earlier parts when that line hits six, you might just see that Morphling evaporate very mm -hmm. quickly. Yep, can definitely happen. Ooh, a poison touch from Fly connects on to the Bane. I'm going to try to run away here. I'll see how many right clicks Fly can get in. Maximize his damage. Does force out a Tango. Bounty runes. Going to be two apiece. Even spread so far. Yeah, Fly also still hanging around in the area. Maybe going to go for a bit of a courier snipe, but uh, there is some Radiant Vision. They didn't see the Dazzle move back towards the bottom lane, so this might get spotted out here if he attempts something. Still hanging on to that Observer Ward. Maybe thinking about a deep ward placement. Yeah, he's just going to chill mid. Once the Bane's there, and this is what we kind of expected. Dual lane mid. Now look at this though, Trent. Level one in Feeble on this Bane. Not something you see too often anymore. Uh, garbage. It's really bad compared to how good it used to be. Yeah. I, mean, I remember bringing it up on day one, and you slapped me around a little <laughs> bit about how bad it was. And uh, we're actually going to see it here. Now, is there any merit to it? I mean, do you think this is objectively the wrong choice, or is, is it the option in this know, particular I'm, lane matchup? Shumail just got like a last hit with it on. Abed's not even playing near the Murano to get the nice while it's there. So. And once the levels stack up, it definitely gets a little bit better. But level one, like, he's still just getting last hits here. So, yeah. like, what's the point? I'm I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm kind of asking you for the merits on this one. He's arrowing the range creep, too. Like, this feels like quite a waste. And even Crit now rotating oh, in, one, pulling Finally. some of that uh, attention from jabs. You know, not able to keep that uptime. No, but as much as I'm, I'm flaming and everything, it changes a lot at, uh, like, level three. Get the second point in there. Up the duration by half. <laughs> like a 50% increase from 8 to 12. Pretty big deal. Other drawbacks, though, right? That means you're not going to have these points in Brain Sap, so Bane not going to be able to do as much damage. Or you're sacrificing the point Nightmare. Obviously uh, not ideal. Look out. Crit missed the stun. He missed the stun, and then he missed the chat wheel on the whoops as well, and hit careful. <laughs> so <laughs> double misplay there from Crit. Very disappointing here. Yep. Uh, this bottom lane, we we're just looking at it, but it's uh, the battle of the big boys. The two tanky off laners should be a pretty boring farm fest down here. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Woo! Hot stuff. It's hard to find someone that is larger in lane than Centaur, but Underlord is certainly that. Yes. Big old boy. Look he's, at him. He's got the Huge. So continue our dual lane mid, and uh, Sumail still even with this Morphling, both in last hits and denies. Really not a significant advantage either way. And moving up on this top lane. Yeah, Abed's looking to just block the range creep arrow. He's just constantly positioning. Sumail can't find yeah. an angle onto it. Actually, stun, stun. arrow, follow up. Abed, probably not going to go down here, but a lot of pressure coming his way. Very low on regen. Only one tango left after this healing cell. 
Yeah, and Jabs just doesn't really have any more mana either. He spammed out so many of these in Feebles. Yeah, it does have another Clarity, but yeah, it's a fair point. Not the biggest mana pool on Bane and Feeble. 95 mana, even at level 1. Yeah, it's just different in the whole trade war, too. So now Ice Slice has come in behind the tower. So he's, he's trying to keep up while also staying in experience range of his tower, where it's tanking full wave. So that'll work out pretty well for him. But now S4 just draws the wave further back from the tower and plays some Axe Dota. Yeah. First point in return. Actually able to do this pretty effectively. When you're talking about, like, what's Fly going to do this game, he hasn't really had to do all too much. I mean, he's getting some great pulls up top. There was no block there. Uh, Fly will get scattered out there, but thankfully DJ stayed on the other side of the cliff. Some fire spirits used by the Phoenix. Oh, nice mid arrow lane. lane. Is this going to be our first blood? Abed in a lot of trouble. Does use that fairy fire. Able to stay alive on just Whew. that sliver of HP. No first blood drawn, but a lot of pressure on this Morphling. Yeah, really nice position there from Abed. The way he like, moved back towards them, kind of keep Sumail planted under the tower, taking all that damage, threatening him. And now, Sumail, back up top. Low. MP getting pushed back. Poison Touch getting reset here. Arteezy needs one more, and he'll find it. Oh, man, he did the math on that one. Turned around before it even hit. Yep. I knew he'd have it not tank the tower. 16% slow on that Poison Touch. Makes it pretty easy for that Terra Blade to chase him down. So EG will be the ones to strike first, and that'll find an advantage up here in the top lane. Tough stuff for the Tiny. Yeah, and Sumel, though, he's had to do the whole run back home in the mid lane. So finally all this harass starting to pay off. Abed will get a little bit of an advantage here in the CS battle. Everybody back in the fan right now. They're having a little bit of a party. This isn't a shrine, guys. You can use it individually. Feels like some pretty free up lanes of the one for that. MP is going to get chased down again. They don't even need the meta. The poison touch is just too much, but Arteezy goes down before MP dies. That's got to be a blunder. Yeah, that tower armor, just a, a bit too much there. I guess knowing he'd have to commit, probably just because of more rotations plus the Phoenix, but. Oh, but that works out pretty well for MP. Very much so. And Fly even getting credit for that kill. So great for the Dazzle, but our position one Terror Blade, not ideal. Bounty runes now coming out. EG able to grab two, maybe even three as Fly charges in. DJ can't get there in time. Now takes a poison touch to the face. Does not have an Icarus dive, but Fly himself does not have much. No shallow grave, not enough mana for the TP. Looking for a deny on Roche. Is Roche going to help him oh, out? Oh no, the attack speed's slow. He can't get the aggro. That was heartbreaking. <laughs> Mid lane now, and you see the stun onto Jabs as he tries to rotate through. Sumail jumps forward. They've almost got the damage here, and that last arrow will have enough despite the enfeeble. But Crit also goes down. One for one trade in the mid lane. Both cores picking up a kill. Bit of an XP lead there for Abed just because of zoning him all the way back to the base. The value of fire spirits. I tell ya. Gotta bring a health already there on S4. Yeah, nice Ice Ice not even needing one though. Bottom lane still pretty even trade. Ice 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 is getting the better of it. Uh, level 7 just as S4 uh, hits level 6 now. And although they're contesting for the top run, it's gonna be a haste on bottom that uh, the team's gonna be racing towards here. By trying to throw some damage in mid there, but if Crit gets this haste rune, which uh, I think they give the bottle to him, we'll see if that's what they opt for. And for yeah, he's being spotted by Ward anyway, so the good thing is that play would not have worked out very well. That means Smell just hold the haste rune. Back up top, MP pretty aggressive with his positioning, looking to cut this wave. These creeps pushing in now alongside a siege creep. Actually, a lot of damage on this tower now, already about half HP. They jump into our TZ, and it's a dead Terra Blade, just like that. Now, PSJ can always spot a game where a Terra Blade's gonna feed a lot. You know, he's been there, he's experienced it. That's why I trusted him on this matchup for Fnatic. That's, that's why I knew that they could do this. He's Take down RTZ early. This is not the Arc Warden game. No, definitely not. And it's stopping this Terra Blade from setting that tempo that I was so worried about against the Morphling. But th this mid matchup has really just been a, a battle of keeping both cores down. Sumail and Abbe have lowest of the cores right now, neither of them really having a great economy to start things off. Yeah, I guess you could say it's kind of favoring EG because, you know, in like the 1v1, you're kind of expecting more Top. to out farm a little. Fly. It's going to be another one, perhaps, for the Tiny. Does get off the Shallow Grave, but the Fire Spirit Burn, it's going to last one more tick and flies down. Another one up for DJ. Tip. Five to three. Fnatic taking the lead Ooh, for now. Abed. Crit now in the mid lane. Abed jumps in. Now level six, able to turn into the Marana arrow. Ooh, flies through as the nice. Nightmare gets used, and that's going to be adapted to finish off Crit. Abed 
Not gonna be able to pursue against the haste rune that's since been used by Sumail. A couple levels of the Bane Rana combo working out here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Save versus the arrow, not exactly the way these two heroes usually work together, but they'll take it. And now they're battling for that top rune here too, as likewise, yeah, Jabs running into S4. So Smoke up for EG, oh, yeah. It's Sumail who gets it up top though, so they killed Jabs, but now DD Sumail still has to move back from that Morphling. He's not able to go back to farm, or rather to uh, go into his uh, attribute shift. Vanguard first item for S4, completed on the Centaur. The big boy getting even bigger. And they don't have anyone up top though, as you'll see on your picture. And picture MP takes the tower in another tiny game. He ended up godlike in the last one. We'll see if he can find that here once again. Targets to eliminate early on the fights. I mean, you got double squishy supports here in the Dazzle and the Lion. There's certainly opportunities. Yeah, no doubt. Looking for potentially for a go in the mid lane. That fly not able to get there in time and set much up. Jeez. MP already has his whole game planned out here. <laughs> that quick buy. He's got okay. his blink ready, his echo saber, maybe a shadow blade. Perhaps not exactly sure which tool is going to be the best in a game like this. With the Moran on your team, or rather on the enemy team. Still a great start for the Tiny. And if this keeps up, he will have a very well timed blink dagger. Yule's Scepter going to be the first choice for Ice Ice Ice. It's an interesting build. Yeah, I don't see that one too often on the Underlord. Soul Ring into the Yule Scepter, no less. Kind of gives him a, a self purge, which is a little bit nice. I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit unusual. Some movement speed. It's just kind of like an all around item. Maybe think about like those more ore based items, like the Greaves and stuff. I would have thought like a Crimson Guard might it's, be a good choice here yeah, against the Terror Blade. It's a very like, it's like he's playing Necrophos, kind of, I feel like. Mm. But it's just another element of control. Just uh, maybe he can kind of go deep in the fights. He can use up the Dazzle or something. Allow them to focus down the TP. There's a couple of nice tools he can do with it. Maybe dodge out arrows too. Interrupt TPs. Yep. Things quieting down a little bit as we get close to that 10 minute mark. Some bounties soon to spawn. Looks like EG will control that bottom set and Fnatic will control nice on top. Stun. And we'll see a stun on the Morphling. Sumail able to bottle up that regen rune. Phoenix pops the ultimate, might be enough to get crit, but no, oh, he makes it out in time. Compliments of the Moonlight Shadow. Yeah, nice call there, just ditching, not worth risking anything. Trying to kill the egg. S4's got a stampede. Could be some potential for a go if EG want to force things against this Morphling. They've certainly got the numbers advantage here they in the mid. They need crit though, they want that hex, that stun. There's the Stampede, they jump in, Arrow does connect on Abed, but he is morphing, they just don't quite have the damage to finish him off, they need a little bit more and they've got it. S4 gets the last hit, now EG backing up, looking to reset, they know there isn't a Supernova, but the Pit of Malice locks S4 in place, they bring down Sumail, and it looks like S4 will go down as the Grave expires. Two for Fnatic in exchange for their Morphling. Yeah, perfect wrap there from MP, caught them uh, all coming back onto their own side of the ramp there. It secures that fight for Fnatic, so... Greedy go there, yes, they get Abed. But in the end, it looks like it's gonna be uh, Fnatic with the victory on that one. As they can start pressuring the tower with the catapult and Abed's coming right back. Crit looking for a stun here. And it will connect jabs. on jabs. Should be dead. So level two poison from the Dazzle. Yeah, that'll be enough to bring him down. Abed turns back into the Marana, but can't do much about it. The only uh, silver lining for EG after that two for one trade is that was space for uh, Arteezy to keep farming. That whole time he was just committed down bottom. His net worth now looking very good, surpassing the tiny and nipping at the heels of that disgusting underlord. Yeah, ice is ice. I mean, he, the heat map for him is very simple this match. One spot, basically, he came mid for that one engagement, but other than that, he's just been chilling down bottom, trading blows back and forth with S4, but now it's uh, Arteezy here. Very scary, like Arteezy, like low HP, you know what this guy wants to do. He's trying to find a real quick, easy sunder onto this underlord, but uh, he'll even take a salve up here now, too. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Gonna cut the creep wave a little bit. Gets that level 10 talent. Kind of pressure into this tower, but Underlord so good. Oh, mid lane, they these pushes. up our Morphling here. Follow up arrow from Sumail. I don't think they'll have the damage. No, I don't think so. Crit uh, does finally have his ultimate, now level seven. Was short on mana there, but opening up some potential kill opportunities for this Morphling. MP still committed up top though. He's got a siege creep and looks like EG will just let this one go. Free tier two. We'll go the way of Fnatic at 12 minutes. And they're going to try play mid here, but there's an Observer and a Sentry placed down here, plus Jabs just backing up Aved, kind of baiting something out here, maybe hoping that Aved's going to try, or rather that Sumail will try a Moonlight Shadow play with the Arcane Rune. 
Certainly tempting. Uh, also, Bane now level 6, so Fiend's Grip in the mix. Blink Dagger up on Tiny. This could be the reveal. See if he can find a quick pick with it. Though some pretty good wards down from EG in the enemy territory. Might be able to yeah, scout out this potential movement. Doing some kind of weird plays. They're like cutting waves, flies down, warding, and hiding in tree lines. I say, say he's holding that tower for the longest time. And with him there and Ovid in the mid lane, MP pushing out top, they haven't been able to get any objectives so far from EG, but they will find Jazz. Yep, once again, easy hex initiation for crit. And of course, plenty of follow up. Moonlight Shadow now. Fake back, it looks like, from EG. Just not the kill that uh, they need, though. Yeah, they want one of these cores. Yeah. Try and slow down what's happening here. But much like the last time, it is still RTZ. Farming White doing the Dire Triangle, getting some uh, camps done here. And maybe a smoke now to have Bomb. Oh, RTZ's going to pop the meta, so he's not going anywhere. Yeah, the last little smoke while the meta's been popped. So just trying to make some more space. Uh, S4 is closing in on his Blink Dagger, just a couple hundred gold away. A lot of key item timings for the evil geniuses, but who will they find here? They're gonna bump right into DJ. There's a hex, but MP comes right back in, jumps onto Sumail. Sumail will live through the burst as the stampede gets used. They also force out the supernova. Fnatic will not be able to find a counter kill, but EG were the aggressors that smoked in. They'll be repelled back to their own tier two in the mid. I'm kind of surprised MP's only level nine with how much he's been playing kind of alone this game. I guess just uh, spreading a lot of that with DJ, who's also level 9 on the Phoenix. A little surprising. He's had the Tomes, too, but just one more level, and that's killing Marana. Oh, Fly drops down the Sentry Ward, reveals jabs, but it'll be the end of it. MP catches him there. Probably a Tier 1 tower. I need to go in favor of Fnatic. EG do use the Glyph, though. I like how Ice Ice rotates, even when it looks like very secure. They're just trying not to give any of the advantage away that they have right now, because they know that they're on the clock here. Uh, versus the TB, at least a little bit. Like, obviously, even more playing in the game looks pretty good, but Crit is caught here. Thanks, Ice Dice coming in here. Still has the Yules for an and one if anyone comes too close. Yeah, we uh, just saw against the Centaur. One of the cool things with the Yules is you can drop the Pit of Malice, Yules them in the pit, they come back down, and you'll almost always get that second stun. So, yeah. or, well, disable, root. That's what it is. Yeah, Finally got to definitely it. Definitely one of the more useful parts about having the animal on the hero. So, it's kind of cool. Maybe not a game changer, but seeing some of that utility. Very small lead for Fnatic, though. Only about 1k net worth is their favor. This is Terrorblade. Continues to lead the farming charge. Yasha now coming out for RTZ. Now S4 bottom, caught. S4. Beam's Grip probably going to come out after this. That Yule Scepter sets things up. Arrow will actually connect on jabs. S4 living a bit longer than wow. planned. Fly gets there in time with the Shallow Grave. They'll turn on to Ice Ice Ice. Jabs also goes down. S4 blinks and dodges the Avalanche too. The Moonlight Shadow, he might survive. They're looking for him. They can't quite find him. He does not have a TP scroll, but he's got a lot of friends nearby. They're going to rotate into the Shrine. It's already been used. Limited detection. The Courier does get its immunity. It'll survive as they jump in onto the Phoenix. S4 is ready. Down. He wants to go back in. He's so low here. Oh, oh, but a beautiful setup, setup for the, the arrow. Alley oop into the arrow. It's going to be four down. EG find the advantage. <sighs> Jeez, I cannot believe that long range arrow to stop the fiend script. And the grave comes in from fly. They're just finding every spell on point there from EG, despite it looking like a great start. Perfect. From Fnatic timing. and a free pick onto a centaur. Absolutely perfect timing. That would have been a victory if S4 had died there and they still got that trade. The fact that S4 is able to live yeah. makes this so ridiculous. I mean, and again, this comes down to that vision that they laid down earlier. Like, they see no one else is rotating. They're like, yeah, this is just two heroes, guys. So, was that a mistake, you think, to use the Yules there? The, the Bane wanted to Fiend's Grip to start things off, and that actually gave S4 that extra little bit of time he needed to survive. Well, it uh, certainly didn't pay off. And then, yeah, that blink from S4, too. And <laughs> just continuing that, that vision, helping out, right? These supports rotate through, or at least the support DJ and then MP, and they're just able to hunt them down because of this premeditated vision. And the lack of vision. Each you kind of baiting with the courier a little bit, saying, hey, we're still here. They knew they were there, but you could tell there just weren't options. MP didn't know where to run. You got to love when players like stick around in a fight like that, too, even when they're like 10% HP, because they can create moments like that. But uh, Arteezy up on the high ground, farming some ancients. Smoke on the way in. Fnatic, hungry for blood, looking for some vengeance after that lost fight. Not only going to find a couple of Terror Blade illusions, not what they were hoping for. Now the TP up top from Arteezy to continue that farming pattern as Fnatic make the rotation mid. Sumail and S4 could fall victim to this. S4 scouts things out, does not get the blink off in time. Tiny combo, Fiend's grip, the arrow across the way. 
This time the Bane just cancels the grip early. Centaur able to live, Stampede to secure. Yeah, this guy, he's 2k HP. Not enough for Tiny to target. And this is uh, some of the questions about this like very early Tiny pick. It does give you uh, choices for cores that can actually survive. And yet the one core they saw was the Centaur, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have time to respond to the draft, but they picked the Tiny into it. Not even a hood or a casual cloak on S4. So that's just some good old fashioned centaur girth right there. Yeah, Vanguard health, that's about it. Now a rotation back bottom from Fnatic. It's that's pretty shocking this towers of the HP it is, honestly. I feel because Ice has just been playing down here the entire time and has not been able to get the damage on this tower. It's been on the defensive though. It seems like most of his time has been hiding in that tree line, defending his own tower rather than uh, pushing out himself. I mean, it also comes down to the fact that when he was like taking control of the lane, he rotated mid to help his team push the towers. So I like that because it was helping to secure pushes that honestly they probably would've got anyway without him, but he was there to back up in case there was a return for play from EG and it worked out a couple times. Sometimes he wasn't needed, but those are the moments where you could've been a bit greedier and maybe had this tower down by now. Interesting choice from EG. They walk across the river and then smoke on the high ground. They'll jump onto jabs, blink over right into arrow. Another alley oop to secure the kill on the bane. Now moonlight shadow for the exodus. They've got dust this time. Fnatic want to punish this. They will catch Sumail. Abed morphs into the Marana, misses the arrow, trying to pursue, but nowhere for Sumail to go. It'll be a one for one. Yeah, the other heroes were also dusted up, so no chance of sticking around to try and help Sumail. Now they're going to instantly underlord the bottom. DJ's going to step out of it. He does not want to go join the party. He's saying that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of farm mid here, guys. I'm trying to finish up a Sheev's guard, so give me some time here. And crit. He looking for the catch on to crit. Good yeah. time to buy a Blink Dagger. Certainly pay some dividends there. He does get caught by the Pit of Malice, but no vision. Fnatic not able to pursue into the tree line and feel confident about it. Marteze still been very quiet, Trent. Pulling ahead, now 2k above the uh, Morphling. Just about to have that BKB picked up as well as level 15, so some extra health, making him that much harder to kill. That's a very similar uh, draft, this game, from both teams. I think uh, they got like a super hard one, right? And this Terrorblade versus the Morphling. Then we got our kind of like bursty, falling off kind of cores in the Marana and Ooh, the Tiny. Bottom. Not able to get the deny, but crit blinks in. Hex onto the Underlord. This is a little bit risky, I think, for EG. There's the Yule Scepter onto the Marana as MP rotates in. Sumail getting very low, tries to leap off the map, but not going to be successful. On the other side, Jabs does go down, so it's a one for one, but advantage for Fnatic as they pick up a core. Yeah, nice use of the Yule Scepter there. As you saw, second he comes back out of the Yules, just stuck. Can't Great get anything going Marana. with the leaps. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. But uh, yeah, just the way these drafts are so similar, I think. Uh, it's all about who gets this lead in terms of these first Aegis's, uh, because it is a Morphling versus a TV. I mean, theoretically, if Abed can find that correct Morph, he is just better terribly, right? He's going to be doing more damage, and then he gets all the benefits of the Metamorphosis too, able to cast that spell, despite it basically being the ultimate for terribly, yeah. the wonders of the hero. Must be great having a hero with two ultimates. Dark Willow is quite good, yeah. Yeah, she is. Centaur, good night, S4. It's going to be a quick pick from Fnatic. Nice pick up there, though it is a pretty big rotation. <laughs> this is a circle from DJ on the minimap, just saying, in here. This is where I would like to play, please. Somewhere around this area. Yep, I think they're farm. I think we need some warts. That would be great. Leave the message there. Radiant uh, doing quite well at the event. Believe overall, the victories. Now, mind you, first pick, I think, is doing a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But uh, Radiant team, of course, the reason why I feel so good is that uh, you're Able to control up the Roche Pit a lot easier. You wow. just kind of play on this part of the map way more. As Fnatic move into the Roche Pit, Trent, I want to guide your eyes to this Please. item in the inventory of Morphling. Tell me what's going on here. We just yeah. answered a question about this the other day. What? It's the so e good. It has games for it. It's the same reason why Tiny's like like has a couple of good targets. So does Morphling in this game, honestly. Okay. I think it's okay. Plus, you're getting the meta damage, right? So basically, because you're against the TB, you morph into him, you get meta, and then you're still morphling. Like, you get the benefits of both types of morphling because of it. Did they just get that? No, I thought the arrow stole it. Very close, but no. <laughs> so, nice reality rift back to safety. Or, uh, reality rift. Dark rift. Dark light. Okay, Fnatic get away with that, though. Nice, easy Roche. They secure the Aegis. EG not able to react in time. I guess my concern with this build for the morphling 
is how well is it going to scale in terms of just straight right-click carry? I mean, yeah, it's got some merit, but this Terra Blade is really coming right, online. Which, which Terra Blade? Could you clarify? The, the Dire Terra Oh, Blade. okay, thank you. The, the Terra Blade <laughs> with the BKB and Manta style incoming. Oh, that one. Yes. Yeah. The gotcha. one that will actually be able to kill things with right clicks. That oh, one. I see. Hey, I mean, look at this guy. He's got like 200 damage still on that Morphling. And then at 600 back. HP, yeah, that'll be fun in this next team fight. It's soloed by the Lion. I, I mean, I, I don't know that it's the wrong choice. It just makes me a little bit nervous, and I, I think it puts Fnatic on a little bit more of a timer. Certainly some pressure on Abed to find some kills. You know, yeah, for uh, sure. E-Blade is not a farming team. Let's see if they can find this kill. It's taking a while. Yep, Ice 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 will be able to live. Now the Moonlight Shadow to disengage as MP jumps forward. Good lord, that is, that's hard to believe. Looks like it could be a fake back though. They uh, break the Blink Dagger and, okay, that's it. What was that, like four heroes? Yeah. Just trying to throw damage onto this guy. And the Crimson Guard is done, so it just gets more difficult here. But well, he's gonna try and create that big buffer zone that's gonna allow Abed to take advantage of that with the E-Blade. I'm worried about that last hit disparity, too. Right now, Arteezy is about 100 more CS than the Morphling. Very significant at 24 minutes. That is true. Uh, Arteezy has been just completely off the map, it feels like, this game. Throwing out these illusions, but just hiding in the jungle, not really giving any moments to the side of Fnatic. But they're the ones with the Aegis. They're the ones that are trying to push forward into this mid lane. But Arteezy just cuts the wave with illusions. Much like last game, where they were just kind of controlling from the high ground. Or last series, rather, when they were against forward, they just kept like playing the high ground on the radiant side of the map when they were dire. They would just camp all in here and constantly like cut both waves, even if they're a little bit behind, trying to force you into bad fight. That's what they're doing here again. They're just trying to cut that middle lane so they can't actually use this Aegis to the advantage in the mid. They want to force them to go for this tier three top. And you can see Fnatic are just like, ah, that doesn't feel too good. I don't really want to be pigeonholed in from behind with a shrine there. There's going to be Centaur who can just use the Stampede. They're going to close the gap on us and Pinsir feels dangerous. So despite the fact that they're playing the worst part of the map right now for EG, somehow they're still dictating the movements from Fnatic with an Aegis. If Fnatic did just try to smoke through the enemy jungle, and as you're describing, no one from EG was even remotely nearby. Jabs did just go and like guard the wave a little bit though. And this time they don't have the illusions there. So EG lose control of that middle lane. Still two full minutes on this Aegis of the Immortal for Fnatic. A pretty good window for them to try to make something happen. But if they want to take some fights, it's going to have to be on EG's they, terms. They're not finding these bold moves. I mean, you think of this like a Shadow Blade this tiny. There's no coverage in behind that tier two in the mid lane. And maybe they have an opportunity to try and find some mail like that. Now EG making this rotation back towards the mid. S4 hiding in the trees. Maybe thinking about jumping over for this initiation. I don't know if Morphling is the target they want to start on. MP's got the big burst though, and Sumail has no defense items. He's sitting at 1k HP, Echo Saber and that blink. Sumail dies instantaneously if Fly can't react. Arrow actually connects onto Ice Ice Ice. No follow up. I got it, guys. Don't worry. EG's just going to let that uh, tier two go. All right, one outer tower remains for EG. Things looking very good for Fnatic here. I don't think they have the best high ground defense here from EG. It's certainly the place you want to fight, but it's going to take like a really good weave and then pretty much all on S4 to find a massive stomp. Even after the stomp, he still has to uh, retain that position in the front lines, try and give some space to Arteezy, something that got a little bit difficult last game in some of the mid game fights when he was playing on the arc ward where he kind of needed that similar bit of a buffer. Of course, they were still able to carry that one to the victory. Mm -hmm. Vincing fashion. So um, I, I think you, maybe you uh, were on some of this E-Blade because uh, he hasn't used it and he just picked up a BKB. That doesn't really feel great. It doesn't help yeah. you farm that fast compared to something like a Manta. Mm -hmm. Ortiz already has his Manta and starting to close in on the Scotty. About halfway there. Though the BKB does open up some more teamfight options for the Morphling. Closing in on his this level 18. It's just who gets stunned first, man. 10 second VKVs. Of course, the edge remains for Fnatic, but only for about 10 more seconds. This Aegis is actually about to expire. This could be a bad fight for Fnatic. Well, Gotta no, find that time on the Bane. Jabs goes down straight away. The Aegis, it's a matter of seconds, and there it goes. Buyback now used by Jabs. Stampede already been deployed for EG. So far, so good for this dire squad. They'll just disengage after forcing that buyback. That'll be the end of the fight. Morphling did use that 10 second charge. Got Ooh. nothing out of it. Uh-oh. Danger here for Fnatic. That is a pretty costly. 
those moments. Just a single pickoff on a support, losing your ages just as it's timing out. And as you said, the 10 second BKB without it being expended there from Arteezy. And this will probably be enough time that by the next fight, Sumail should have his own BKB. And just avoiding this moment where MP should have been able to get some kills on him, or at least was hoping to. MP just stalled out real hard this game. And he's below DJ at this point. Yeah. Just can't find kills. Uh, Terrorblade controlling the map, and the rest of Evil Genius is just playing in a complete ball, not allowing the solo picks to happen. Yeah, I don't really know that it's MP's fault. I think it's more of a testament to the way e EG have been playing and positioning or themselves. preparing against a, you know, first pick Tiny. That too? Yeah, I they... mean, they knew coming into this series that that was going to be a, ma a major hero for Fnatic. Surely done some homework here. That Aghanim Scepter on Centaur also going to be a really effective tool against the potential burst from this Morphling. Smoke, though, from EG, looking for the wraparound. Ice, 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 the only target they see right now is Phoenix makes it back over to the other side. So EG will be pretty cautious, not going to force it. They won't find the angle and instead just head back to their side of the map, maybe looking for a Tier 1 up top instead. Again, though, they're just leaving these Arteezy illusions, trying to cut, and yep, 3-1. Another rather relaxed game. I'm sure uh, they're not feeling very relaxed. So of course, the lower bracket, the game away from heading home. I mean, you look at that net worth graph, and it's very telling of how tight this game's been. We're about at the 30 minute mark, and it's never been more than a 2,000 net worth lead either way. It's all coming down to the team fights. And it's Evil Genius just coming in here in Viz on that shadow. big, beefy target. They want the Underlord, but is it the target? The Avalanche connects on quite a few. The Stampede forward, Ice 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 goes down, no buyback. Now it's MP on the defensive. Phoenix does not dare go for that Supernova. Where's Ovid? Where's the Vision? They can't get in. It's again going to be a free pick. And even a regen rune was ready there for Sumail. G not going to continue pushing up top. They'll let the creeps do the work for them, and instead they just rotate mid and cut that creep wave. I mean, they're fully aware that they cannot fight with their eyes. It's, like, it's going to take a hell of an initiation from MP or some incredible egg from DJ to make that work. See this Roche timer here in about 15 seconds. Certainly something EG will want to grab for themselves this time as they finish off that tier two up top. Oh, this terribly just applies so much of the same logic as the Arc Warden for Arteezy. Talked about how he felt like he can just win the game no matter what when he's playing Arc Warden. He always has a way to do it. And you can kind of see the same things that he's doing on the terribly, right? He's cutting waves. He's controlling the game from a single hero like this. And there's reason this guy used to play Nog all the time too and why he looks so dominant on it. Cutting waves is just so much of your power and uh, like it takes away your options as a team when you just don't have a creep wave going somewhere for Fnatic. And they're just constantly getting out push. Yep. Lincoln Sphere, third item choice for Abed. What do you think here, Trent? Do you like this on the Morphling? I don't think he has a choice, really. It kind of becomes this default item versus the TB. It's like way too risky not to have it. And then there's also a, a Lion here, too. So yeah. there's two really good games for it. For sure, still just rough to see their, their big carry take two defensive items alongside the E-Blade. I, I would agree, it seems like he's forced into it, but but, I mean, that's kind of the point of Morph, though. Like, it's fine. That's, like, one of the benefits of this hero, is that you can afford to go for these defensive still get items damage, and yeah. still have so much. Especially against the Terror Blade, it's true. Yeah. And Jab's moving in here, but they have the vision. So EG, patient. They want to take this fight. Reflection from Arteezy to start things off. S4 just jumps in onto the Phoenix. Follow-up finger. They'll bring him down. That's a gem that's hit the deck. Now it's DJ all that, will though. buy back. Yeah. DJ back into the fray. EG very spread out right now. Maybe got Sumail going to be Sumail. left behind. Yep, and that's going to be Abed to jump in and finish him off. All right. Well, if they get the Roche because of this buyback, that's uh -oh. going to be just fine. Mid lane. Oh, okay. They're going to use the Dark Rift. A Roche. Fnatic ready to put big pressure on. There's no buyback on Sumail, and they're going to grab Crit on the back line as MP jumps in. They will use the Glyph. A double catapult wave. They decide to make their play on. S4 hops in, though, gets on four. This could be huge. EG need to hold here. They've lost DJ. That's a dieback as Arteezy pops the BKB. Scotty online doing big damage in the back line. Jabs trying to move his way into the tree line, but he'll fall. Arteezy still repelling the likes of Fnatic right now. It was a good play, but it looks like it's going to backfire as now Ice 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 gets brought down. Fnatic oh. completely repelled. <laughs> they don't even get the tier three below half health. That was a bold move, not going for the Roche. Maybe they just thought it wouldn't be up at that point because it was one of the earlier spawns, and they just saw a moment. They've been 
frustrated, I'm sure, by all this creep cutting over and over, but a replay is that, yeah, this is right where it happens. It's like, okay, let's go. This looks really great. Like, they have these Morphling Illusions from the Morphed TV coming in, the double catapults. Mirana's down, but there's still Centaur. Beautiful pick on the crit as well. You've got this 5v3. Everything's coming together for them. It's like, how could this possibly go wrong? And then Daddy's home still has that big BKB. And then S4 just creates so much chaos from the high ground. This reflection going to work yeah. on the side of Fnatic. Four hero stomp and that moment where they see the raid boss and Fnatic make the call to scatter and uh, does not end in their favor. Hard to run away from the Terror Blade once he's got that Eye of Scotty up. Of course, as you can see in the picture in picture, that is a Roshan secured for EG. Oh my god, Aegis the levels. for RT. 20 TB, the reflection cooldown with an Aegis and a Scotty. Oh, I believe uh, we usually call that coming online for the heroes. Yes, uh, Arteezy has uh, plugged the modem in. It's and great. He is surfing the World Wide Web, baby. Nabed's on dial up, I think. <laughs> He's still trying to get this Lincoln Sphere. He'll get it now. Great. Yep. Hanging about here. Bit of a bold maneuver here, but he has the gem. He knows that they shouldn't have another one by now, at least. Of course, when a war gets dewarded nearby, maybe it's time to go. S4 now, getting very close to the Agonims on the Centaur. All right, there's the line from DJ. He's circling mid, saying this is where we're going to try and create a fight. I mean, they've, bait ice. they've got to do something here. This Morphling is geared up for pickoffs, and they need to find them. Arteezy's... <laughs> Getting a bottling here, dropping, grabbing uh, his dragon lance back up. Smoke rotation now, Fnatic charging up the high ground. They drop the ward before they head up there, playing things very safe. But all of EG in enemy territory right now, again, forcing Fnatic to take this fight in a oh, really unfavorable scenario. I, I like how Abba's been using these TD uh, illusions, though. Like, he's pushing out that top lane with them and trying to give them at least some sort of force of pressure onto the side of Evil Geniuses. Not responding here, though. Teasy now in the mid. Scouting things out a little bit as that tier two in the bottom lane falls. EG look like they want to go high ground, force a response out of Fnatic, and there will be the TP's home. They're just abusing this Aegis on the side of our Teasy. Like, the way they're positioning him, he's the closest person to the side of Fnatic at all times. Yeah. It's still a nine second BKB charge on this oh, terror. There it is. The big Aghanim Scepter on Centaur Warrunner. Makes these fights very difficult to execute. 40% damage reduction for four seconds. And what's terrifying is that they're a burst based lineup, right? Like this Tiny and this Morphling feel like they've, not only in heroes, but itemization, they've gone full out for it. Yeah. And MP, despite eventually picking up that Shadow Blade they were kind of hoping for, hasn't really found too much with it. And they gave away their gem too. The only are picked up for Sumail too. This might be a 2-0 here. EG climbing so quickly in the net worth. Now a 9k lead after what looked like things could be figured out here for Fnatic. Just feels like Fnatic are running out of options. They're trying these smokes and EG is just not giving them anything. Playing so tight right now. Set up onto S4 with the Yule Scepter, but the rest of Fnatic does not want to initiate on that. They see the Terra Blade nearby and I think they're going to have to let this tier two go. It's hard to believe that's the real deal when he just runs in like that. But again, just kind of hoping to create an engagement with Speaking this Aegis. to how powerful they are right now, just a straight Daedalus queued up for Arteezy. He wants some big damage. Oh, there's big damage in the Roast Pit. They back away here too with the DD. Time on the Aegis, about a minute 15. Well, a pretty long window for EG to continue maintaining map control. Further this net worth advantage. Crit closing in on his Eon Disc as well. Give that line a lot more survivability. Yeah, I love this item on this hero. It feels really good when you're playing like Lion or Shaman to have it because honestly, your damage isn't that important. It's just making sure you get off your stuns and all your spells. And a hero like Lion can definitely play around uh, that Eon Disc proc so you can still get some damage out. Feels like Fnatic are just stuck behind this line right here. Not much map control for them right now. Yeah, they're trying to find this sentry and exactly where it is. It's uh, getting their war, but now they'll see it down the low ground. Slow and steady for EG, waiting for this opportunity as the Aegis comes close to expiration. 
What does Fnatic do here, Trent? They need to find some sort of pickoff on the leg. Even just crit or fly would be great, honestly. Just create a, a bad fight for EG, just something where they don't have everything available for them. Maybe you just catch them in their split. Like, you can see the way that they're applying pressure to all three lanes. Well, that means that someone's got to be at least a little bit away from each other. So you got to take some sort of a risk. Uh, either that or you just hope for DJ to carry you with some crazy egg. But, I mean, he's against two of the best Tough. heroes in the Marana and the Terrorblade for dealing with it. So his hero just won't be enough. They yeah. both have DKBs. Virtually impossible for DJ to have a real impact on these team fights. And then you start looking at the rest of the lineup and you're like, okay, well then they need a instant burst from a tiny, but the HP, it, it's starting to build up on these heroes. I mean, even Dazzle's up to 16.22 at this point. It's not a simple play for MP anymore. Yeah, definitely not. One of the drawbacks of the tiny is you keep going back to when that snowball doesn't get rolling, almost feels like a different hero in terms of the amount of pressure he's able to put on. He's managed to clear out that bottom wave, but EG just choking out the map. Being so patient right now, waiting for this opportunity. There now they the go. smoke from Fnatic, realizing they have to do something That's to break this Arteezy. game open. The smoke gets popped. They do go in onto Arteezy. MP connects to the Avalanche, but they don't want to run up to the high ground. They know the Dire have a lot of friends nearby, and they will not pursue. Well, that was their moment. I might just use the Sunder, at the very least. Yep. 40 second cooldown. <laughs> okay, so that's why. It's like, really? I could have just healed you, dude. That seemed really unnecessary. <laughs> like, now we don't have Sunder for 40 seconds. Jabs in the danger zone. Almost gets interrupted by crit. But we'll be able to complete the TP. MP jumps out. Sentry wards come. Almost gets caught. Arteezy looking to punish that, but won't be able to get there in time. Light Shadow. Oh, man, I'll be hearing a lot about this E-Blade later, I think. It's just like, I mean, it's not even his fault, really, in terms of the atomization. They just never had a chance to use it. Like, if you're going to build this way, you got to at least get your game plan going for it. They did not find it at all. Ice, 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 now outside of the base. This could actually be the fight. EG are not grouped up, though. Only three heroes nearby. Fnatic jump out, but it's going to be a stampede from S4, and it will easily disengage. Perhaps a little frustrating for EG right now that they can't really do much to crack this high ground, but the farm is continuing to skyrocket in their favor. Now 13, 14k net worth. Ice 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 walks up to the high ground. He will get caught by an initiation. RTZ with the BKB on, brings down jabs. Ice 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 with the Dark Rift trying to head back. He might be able to survive, but his teammates just head back to the high ground. Oh, trying to make a, a go there. And they forced out a meta, they forced out a BKB. Now feels like a good moment to smoke to the Radiant team, compared to that last one at the very least. And it's a 15k lead, 16,000 experience as well. 6,000 6, experience, sorry. That would be a little ridiculous. Big, it was big difference there. Yeah, yeah just slightly. EG may be thinking about uh, waiting for next Roche. We'll see what that timer looks like in about 45 seconds. Still a little, little ways to go there. I, they're in no rush. They, they know that they're just completely squishing the growth of Fnatic. <laughs> DJ, this is all he can do. Kind of surprised he didn't escape. Like, they don't even go for like a hex play or something because they don't really want to force that fight at DG. Ice Ice Ice, pretty far out of the base. Stampede can be used. Make sure Arteezy stays safe from that combo of MP. This tiny just gets destroyed. There's an egg. Yes, there is an egg. <laughs> Very astute, my friend. <laughs> that was a bit of an odd one. Did not achieve much, and that's going to be on cooldown now for another 100 seconds. Tiny does have a buyback available. Arteezy actually getting a little bit low. Where's Fly? Come here, Fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get There it is. Hey, there we go. <laughs> oh, what a life. The life of the Dazzle. I mean, it is true. It took him a long time to heal him up like that. So just, just keep going to fly. It's fine. I also love that fly doesn't waste the spear vessel charges. Oh, fast Roche respawn. Almost immediate. The tiny dead. EG definitely feeling very safe about this. They'll walk into the pit. Of course, Roche 3 here. Refresher shard and cheese for the taking. What's up, Ice? Probably trying to give us a quick day here or what? So, uh, a double put metamorphosis. Us into a is that what's happening with such a quick... Why Aegis? is this Ice Frog's fault? Because he makes Dota and he made Roche respawn that fast. That's why. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, ice, Ice, Ice. Stepping a bit far forward here. Does have a Dark Rift. 
think he should be able to survive. Man, and nice nice there. He's had some nice saves. Now, is it going to end up being a save, though? Phoenix comes swooping in. Ice 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 still holding on to the ultimate. Jabs does get brought down, and the Underlord soon to follow suit. No mana, no HP, and no options. The instant buyback. That Roche has already gone down. Aegis and Refresher on the Terror Blade. And right now, the cheese in the inventory of the Marana. What's our bad up to? <laughs> what are you Well, doing? you Getting know, Scotty? <laughs> living life. Okay, so buys the Eye of Scotty and now does not have buyback gold. <laughs> Three tank up items. Scotty, BKB, Lincolns. 21k. Now the net worth favor. The buyback from Ice 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 definitely uh, not helping on that front. For Fnatic at least. Desperation mode for Fnatic starting to set in. BKB picked up on Tiny. Yep. Hey, I mean, you have to give them credit. They've been holding this high ground for a while. Maybe that's more so to the patience of evil geniuses, but they have kept themselves in this match. They've kept a hold of their shrines by not giving up a tier three. At least they're creating opportunities for some sort of like a, a wraparound or a TP or some buyback moments. Something, unfortunately for them though, EG just not giving a whole lot. Almost perfect positioning so far. It never feels like Arteezy's truly in danger. S4 finds the catch onto the Underlord. Remember, he's just bought back. If they bring him down here, this will be huge. Dark Rift gets used. There's the Yule Scepter to buy himself some time. He heads back to the well, but the tier three's fall, and Jabs gets left behind. Got the egg too. Double buybacks now. Abed, where are you? We need you. You are the big hero for Fnatic. But there the racks, I, they're gone. Glyph's still available, but the top lane is going to get cleaned up. EG making this rotation mid. There is a Sentry Ward down. MP jumps out onto Fly. Does bring down the Dazzle, but it's a dieback for Jabs. Arteezy in the front lines, repelling the likes of DJ and MP stuck outside of the base. The BKB not going to be enough to keep him alive as S4 catches him with yet another blink stun initiation. Tosses him back, but it'll be another kill for oh, Arteezy. And the sunder too. A great sunder onto Ice Ice Ice. Now he's on the run. The Pit of Malice might be enough to keep him alive, but will it be enough to save the base? It's a 5v3 right now. Fnatic low on resources as this tier 3 mid takes a lot of damage. EG just backing away here. They're going to use the cheese, hand over to Arteezy. They want to keep this Aegis nice and strong, keep this meta rolling. It still has half duration remaining and looking to put an order of demolition upon the mid-racks. Slow, methodical execution here from EG, just ripping apart the base of Fnatic. Mid lane of Barracks now destroyed. Still a range standing up top, but EG are going to keep this train rolling. The tier three's already gone down in the bottom. Fnatic need to make this one final stand. If there was ever a moment, oh, this is it. it is. But S4 jumps in. Morphling gets caught. He's low. His hand's in the cookie jar, and the jar will shut. Buyback used. EG maybe still can be repelled. Arteezy oh, the has grave. the Aegis. The Grave him. on 2 HP. There's the Sunder. Ice 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 gets brought down low again. Bane has respawned. Terrorblade oh, takes the E-Blade, the Disarm, slows He's him down just a little bit. He's still holding BKB at this point. Absolutely he popped absurd. it so long ago that it's returned. There's another Shallow Grave available now. Fnatic just have no way to stop this damage. EG focusing He's almost even exclusively on objectives here. Arteezy does not have the Sunder up. Needs to be a little bit careful, oh. soon to be 25, but hey, there's Fly with the Shallow Grave. Hey, toss him over to the Dazzle. A minute left on this Aegis, and still that ranged barracks up top, preventing the Mega Creeps from being secured. Another Sunder. <laughs> Thanks, Fly. <laughs> the, the Doing mobile God's fountain. work here, Fly. Now Arteezy just heading up to the high ground. Still the 40 barracks. seconds left on the Aegis. Just... Huge damage here. Sunray ticking him down, but Megas will be secured for the evil geniuses. Oh, hey, got the Dire Courier, though. You know, take your victories. That's a little pick-me-up. This could be the Aegis. Now the Supernova. They're going to try to focus it down. It gets popped straight away alongside Jabs. Terrorblade going to be coming back to life from the Aegis of the Immortal. Dark Rift back to the well. It is cast by Ice Ice Ice, and he keeps his carry alive. It's a cute play. And they're playing for survival here, right to the very last building, it looks like, from Fnatic. Another morph into the Terrorblade. It looks like it just might be enough to actually send them a bit back here. Okay. With elimination At least on the line. Fly. You're going to hang in as long as you can. It's not over until it's over. 
in theory, still possible for EG to toss this away, but it would take one hell of a miracle for Fnatic. It's a bold hypothesis. Sumail jumps in alongside the Lion. Abed, he turns into a TB, but MP's gone down. It's Terrorblade on Terrorblade action, but RTZ's hit the gym, and he's a bit bigger. No glyph for these tier fours. EG still playing very cautious, not over committing here. Respecting the power of Fnatic as they push forward. The final moments are upon us, Trent, as the Underlord gets brought down without buyback. The Morphling gets hecked, Jeez. pummeled with snowballs, and the GG will finally be called as EG eliminate Fnatic from the KL Major. I'd say EG have had some, some tough games so far this tournament. They've had matches where they didn't look very coordinated or they couldn't quite find like what they were looking for in the strategies they had drafted. Uh, and I know that they weren't very happy with their games yesterday's time with Sumail, but I mean, you've got to be yeah. happy about a game like that. Like the positioning, I mean, this whole series, but that game in particular, where it looked like they were a little on the ropes. It looked like Fnatic kind of had something going, and maybe they could move and push this forward into the game, try and find some picks mm -hmm. off with that E-Blade. Just absolutely nothing. Yeah. I mean, they're just always on the radiant side of the map. Even when it feels like they're, they're supposed to be home defending, they're just like, nah, that's cool. Well, yeah. we'll just chill over here at your shrine and, oh, maybe in your jungle. Do you guys want to come fight us? Do you want to try and go through Arteezy with Stampede and with Shallow Grave? They couldn't. Impeccable positioning around the map. EG looking so good in Very this much series. Very so. But that's it for us today. Let's send it back to our panel to hear their thoughts about this epic series. Yes, thank you very much, gents. 2-0, sweep for Evil Geniuses. Back to the kind of form we saw in the group stages, perhaps. Certainly, the team play has been absolutely top-notch, and it's destroyed Fnatic in two games. Our panel are really winning and able to tell you exactly how that went down. BSJ, impressive display from EG. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for me was the fact that the Morphling went for the E-Blade. I feel like he already had heroes that were able to pick off, and it was kind of his job to just be the frontliner building damage kind of deal um he had the supporting cast from like the underlord and stuff and uh you just saw it didn't use it at all so you have this terror blade that's like steroid farming and you have a morph that isn't and that makes the game hard yeah no, yeah it was it was always getting away from them it wasn't ever a point where you thought no they they can get back into this no, i mean they were ahead like no i mean it's hard to say ahead because it's always weird to like when you think about how tb fights the enemy team because the TB was at like uh, 13k net worth and then it was like three fanatic heroes you know top three and then they had this moment right I think it's it's just after this yeah right exactly after, after this, this yeah. where they the Roche is up and they like they do they do the teleportation to uh, yeah they get a TP T3 exactly yeah and then I don't know exactly what goes down here like I don't four gets this four man hoofs up but DJ does an egg yeah that's the biggest thing that we were all talking about back there he had time right after the uh, right after the stun I guess so if like looking at this stone, like if he eggs, I'm it's pretty probably sure gonna they, die. They just killed it. Yeah, yeah. So like, and after this, uh, they never really looked like they were in the game, I believe. Yeah, I felt like I mean, Arteezy played like a monster in this game. I was looking at the map, and like Fnatic, they would have some moments where they were, you know, they had this like gold lead, but they actually couldn't get out in their lanes because I saw Arteezy actually cut. I don't even know, like 50 creep waves or something with these conjure images. Every single time they're trying to push bottom, they, lo they lose their creep wave. Mid lane, same thing kind of happened. It was time and time he, get he did that. And they had so many ways to protect this Terror Blade that it they just didn't have the damage. It's like this Centaur with the Stampede, the Dazzle as well. They just, I mean, they played really well. And I felt Fnatic as like, in particular for DJ, they gave him so much space to farm on this Phoenix. And I did not feel the impact from the Phoenix mm. in the team fights. One of the criticisms of EG in the past and when they've had three strong cores has been that they can't play together, that they need too much farm. That they can't, you know, they can't get them all up and running. This team seems different to me. This seems more cohesive. There's more team play. There's more, okay, you need me, I'll help you this time. And we saw Saman in, in game one, for instance, very sacrificial almost, in there to protect his teammates half the time. There seems to be much more about them this time around. I feel like he's a, a Sumail, most notably, has like kind of stepped down as from an yeah, yeah. all-star role. I actually have noticed yeah. it in the but last But he can still games. have those games. That's the danger, oh, isn't it? Well, he well, can have the, the games he's games. doing it is like very aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, you know, exactly. He's not like farming. Yeah. He's no, not no, yeah, there's been a lot of games where he, has, he gets a little bit, and right. then he has stunts yeah. in the enemy's like I mean, the, ne the Neko game, he was pretty average, but he did what he had to do for the team. He wasn't yeah. He wasn't trying to be the standout player, was he? Yeah, yeah, I mean, this game he was given an unfavorable matchup. A yeah. lot of focus was put on him, and uh, I think that says a lot about a player to like step down from the all-star role kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. I think I feel like the also the, in this game, the target priority for me was just so much better on EG when they would take the fights. Like This Dazzle, I feel like every single time he was just sitting in the back lines not getting yeah. focused, but on the opposite side, I feel like Crit always found DJ. Like they always had this vision yeah. advantage. They always had this way to start the fight just that much better. They never were getting the jump onto EG. It was always EG starting it. Mm. Yeah. 
I mean, that's the kind of that's a bit the nature of the lineups. Like the only yeah. way Fnatic have to do it is that MP solo kills someone. Else, like if you look at their heroes, they don't they don't really have these stuns. Do you think it's like I don't know? I, I'm like looking back and I'm like this this tiny carry. Yeah. It it really hurts. Like he he's if he's in a support position and can jump in the back and he kills somebody, it's kind of the same thing that he would do as this carry hero, and his he just falls off completely. Right. I mean, game. individually though, he, he's had I mean, he was good in game one. He was great in game one. Yeah. No, so no, I'm wondering. I think it should have worked out this game. Like. They first picked the tiny, right? Kind yeah. of like, uh, but uh, and no, like, did both games. Yeah, but in this game, there are enough heroes where I just never saw him get a pick off before the fight started, which is yeah. kind of strange. Like either the shadow blade came too late, or like Fnatic just had like bad positioning overall in the mid game. Like, cause it's kind of supposed to be, you know, you keep a lane pushed out and the tiny can kind of do what he wants. I, I don't really, I didn't pay enough attention. I think, RTZ did cut. A, I think he was cutting yeah. so many waves too, yeah. though. That this is what RTZ does best, though. Honestly, a lot of chances, but. It's yeah. easier said than done to like do what RTZ did in the last two games. He's just super I mean, like, efficient. I mean, him cutting waves. Like I don't think, like uh, uh, Abed can literally cut waves too. Like he can do the exact same thing. But and he like, didn't itemize to do that. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, he went Eth Blade for hunting. Yeah. Like if he went like Manta and stuff, it, it's a big deal to have your illusions move faster. Like that seems like such a, yeah. like uh, like such a small detail. But like he has E Blade, Terra Blade illusions. Like E Blade, BKB, Terra Blade illusions. While Terra Blade has all these Terra Blade items. Mm. Okay. Uh, other than yours, uh, what was the MVP? It's <laughs> uh, all I heard in the green room, by the way. Yours! <laughs> we were, they were yeah. being silly. They, yeah, were, we, they were being silly. Uh, we went for RTZ. RTZ. Let's give it okay. to RTZ. Yeah. yeah. Just too is much. That, I mean, over the two games, it is a series MVP, obviously. Yeah. No, it's a classic carry performance. Like, he was farming, you know? It's one of these, like, they kind of give him the game, and he, and, like, he does it a little more. Like, he actually carries the game. Like, usually, like, um, a normal carry game, you kind of farm get your BKB and you like click it at the right time mm. like that's a simple game this is a little harder like he did a couple of cool things so that he cut the waves the mid fight like when he just comes running from behind I think they yeah. think it's like a Manta illusion or something like yeah yeah. Like, no, I don't confusing. think they think that that's where he's coming from yeah, at all yeah. Yeah. so very very strong performance mm. alright good stuff uh, one of the men that uh, narrowly missed out on the MVP because we were discussing various different MVPs is a man that joins us right now it is of course the captain and drafter or part drafter, I should say, from Evil Geniuses. Uh, Mr. Fly is going to join us any moment now, I believe. Uh, hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, All yes, right, sir. Great. Hello, hello. Congrats, well done. Um, thank you, thank you. That was much, much better performance overall uh, from the team as well as the individual players, <laughs> more like the group stage. Oh, definitely. I think uh, losing definitely teaches you a lot. Mm. Uh, and we are slowly learning as the tournament progresses, so today was definitely a good day. Okay, and this... Uh, this art coordinate that you, you guys have, uh, I wouldn't say pioneered because we saw it back at TI, but it's taken a while to come back into the meta for whatever reason. Is that purely around the three carries that we've seen dominate recently and the, the search for the next one, as it were? Uh, it's a couple of things. I think just our tour, uh, he kind of started playing the hero in pubs and he really enjoyed it. And then we started thinking, you know, how good is this hero really? We started practicing it. And uh, in this matchup in particular, we know Fnatic is also a team who really likes Arcord, and so we were prioritizing it differently. Right. Um, but yeah. Okay. And did you expect to get it game one? Um, we did. Okay. Um, I think we surprised them because I remember doing the draft when we picked Arcord, and they took a quite a long time to respond because yeah. they were probably planning what do we want against it. Uh, so I did think it come out, came a bit as a surprise, but uh, you know. It worked out. Yeah, a nice surprise, I guess, as well. <laughs> <laughs> We've got uh, three gents alongside Fogged, uh, Pilot, and BSJ. BSJ, questions? Uh, I was just wondering what the process is for a team like you guys after you lose a series to NIP, and then uh, like you have a game pretty soon the next day, and like what's the process for you following those losses? Um, so there's obviously a lot of different factors uh, when it comes to losing. It could be you can look at it from different perspectives. Like first of all, the individual perspective of each player. They're all gonna have some different opinion. You're gonna have to hear everybody out about what they think went wrong, and then you kind of have to like uh, bring all these opinions together and find out exactly why it went wrong. Um, uh, so that's kind of what we did with NIP. We all kind of talked about it. You know, may maybe it's strategy, maybe it's uh, something outside of the game. Uh, so we talk about it, and then. We just have to reset and go for the next day and like have a fresh mind. Yeah, it just seems like you guys changed the way you played, so it's definitely noticeable. we did. <laughs> you want? Yeah, I was just wondering how these games kind of feel. Like a lot of games have been for you guys where you have RTZ like top top net worth, and the rest of you guys are like, you know, you're down there. Like, <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Like, does it feel like you're winning, or does it just feel like it's an even game where if RTZ messes up, you just lose? Um, I think 
Well, first of all, you have to trust your carry, right? And yeah. in this current meta, the carry is very like, he's like sort of a black hole that's sucking all the farm. Uh, if you look at it, it's almost for every single team. It's kind of the same. They have these TBs, these morphs, arc wardens, etc. They take all the farm off the map. Uh, so we kind of know that this is, you have to play around it. Uh, I don't feel like in these games, we were never in danger of losing. There are a couple of fights and Fnatic took a lot of towers from us that second game. But we, we kind of knew that TB is still farming and we just need to find that right opening. So it's all about how well you play right now. And of course, your carry is going to have to be very solid. That was, that was kind of my question that I was going to ask. So my, <laughs> next, my next question is pretty crappy, but uh, does Boba ever admit that he thinks that he lost drafting a game? Um, <laughs> uh, let's say it's a work in progress, you know. Um, there's a lot of different factors. Like some games, he's, he's not sure if he lost a draft or it's play, or maybe it's both. So uh, he, he has admitted before. He has. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, good Once. stuff. Thank, once. once once before, maybe. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, Tao, for joining us. Congrats once more, and uh, enjoy your day off tomorrow. I'm sure you'll spend it doing absolutely nothing but studying your next opponent. Probably. Thank you very <laughs> much, guys. Thanks, Tao. Then we go then. Fly and Evil Genius is safely through to the top six here at the Major. Exactly what they would like to have done, but I'm sure they want to go a lot further in this. And, and gents, they can go a lot further in this as well. If they play like that and they play as a team, the same way as we saw in the group stages. Yeah, I mean, they look way better, honestly. I think the biggest, I already mentioned it, the Sumail thing. I just think mm. like in the in the uh, upper bracket and or even early on in the tournament, they just look like five all-stars. And now it looks like they have a plan. They put it all on RTZ's shoulders. Everyone else just runs around the map making space for them. Yeah, and Deep Heroes now for the first phase bans because it's difficult to ban against them now with that Arc Warden thrown in there and a couple of others. The other yeah. They've got quite a few that they can just they can just go whatever they want. Yeah, I mean, it's a little word if they don't get the like the best RTC heroes to carry yeah. them like that. So then the game is definitely going to be different. Like that Luna game, for example. Mm. Which it was, like it was kind of, they played it kind of similar, but it doesn't really work with that hero. It was tougher, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. I think they'll just pick every f game first round now. Yeah, yeah. I think so I too. Feeling. Secure his hero first too, and then save some else for the last, like they used to do. I think is, that's isn't it the best funny option. how things change though? Sort of In the space of a few months, like carries and mids, they were always like the fourth or fifth pick. And they, you'd never pick the first, you'd get too many counters. Yep. Yeah. And now they're so... Few of them that they've become a massive yeah. priority nerfs in the first phase. Nerfs. Yeah. All the carries suck, so you got to <laughs> pick the few that don't. <laughs> we'll see what changes come from tomorrow, or not tomorrow, the day after tomorrow when LGD and Secret play, and maybe if they reveal something, maybe they change everything again, and then we get to the main event and we're like, or the main stage, and we're like, wait a minute, okay, these guys just opened with completely different heroes and right. changed the whole meta, so could happen. Yeah, um, and Secret have been one of those teams that have led that meta as well, so it wouldn't be a surprise, would it? Uh, let's take a look at the brackets and show you where we are at the Kuala Lumpur Major right now, because we are down to just six teams, incredibly. Uh, Secret versus LGD will be, of course, uh, inside the Axiata Arena on Friday. We'll also have Ninjas in Pajamas, the surprise of the upper racket. Perhaps after defeating Evil Geniuses, they will face Virtus Pro. And down in the bottom of the racket right now, of course, two very deadly teams, actually very dangerous teams down there. TNC Predator, who came through against Vici Gaming earlier today, 2-1, uh, with a fantastic performance. Uh, perhaps a little bit surprising to reach the top six. And Evil Geniuses also guaranteeing themselves a top six position. The biggest surprise for you, gents, so far inside the top six is it TNC? Definitely, for definitely me. for yeah, definitely. No, yeah. it's NIP for sure. Like is that the, the position they're in the bracket. Yeah, like they're definitely the biggest surprise. Okay, for me at least. Position, yeah. I think just like the mine is just like the way TNC was playing in the beginning of this tournament when they threw two games with 30k gold lead and then they're able mm -hmm. to do it for like do really well versus Vici with without like throwing away their lead. I mean, they had a mm -hmm. couple moments. Yeah, no, because I I. I think they played, you know, kind of similar. It's not like they improved a lot, yeah. right? It's just like they just didn't manage to yeah. throw it. It's funny with the NFP thing as well, because when I mentioned the other day on Twitter, I was like, oh, someone's had a great game. And someone pointed out, oh, it's NIP that's playing with a standing. And then when I NIP won, I said, yeah, oh, that's amazing. The NIP have won with a standing. And they were like, yeah, but he's a TI winner. <laughs> yeah. So you can't win, <laughs> can you? I, I mean, I talked to Peter, like, uh, I think the day before the tournament started, and he basically said, you know, they were disappointed with their performance at ESL, but... They honestly thought they were just way better than that, and they were very yeah. confident, like very confident. And I know that's like maybe a Peter thing to say, but he was, uh, I, I don't know. I trust the guy when he says like they have a good idea of what they want to do and everything. Sure. So I, I guess I'm not surprised by that just because if you look at their roster, mm. like I think Sox is one of the best support players out there. He just yeah. wasn't on the yeah, team last year. Yeah, super underrated. And, and 33 missing from the team is, is a big loss, no matter the fact that they have got a world-class fill-in for him as well. But yeah. it is a big loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and IP and TNC, the surprises so far. I'm sure there'll be plenty more around the corner. Uh, however, that is the end of our coverage today. Uh, day number six here at the Kuala Lumpur Major, and we've got a day off tomorrow. I know, we're, 
We're just slackers. We just don't want to work here. Uh, it also gives us the chance for the players to have a rest day as well. Although our PGL friends will be hard at work moving everything from here to the Axiad Arena over the next 36 hours to bring you live coverage from inside the arena for the final three days. Just six teams remaining in the hunt for the Kuala Lumpur Major Championships. We'll see you in a day and a half's time. Hello everyone, we're here at the Kuala Lumpur Major. We're going to play a Malaysian game and we're joined by Judge X Nova. Can you tell us the name of this game? Uh, this game is called Batu Seramban, which is a traditional game when we play it during Chow. Yeah. A Chow. Yeah. Okay, so X Nova is going to be our judge. We've got four LGD players who are going to play. Uh, Pinda Pandi, can you give us a demo? And X Nova, can you run us through what she's doing? Yeah, this is how you're going to play. Right. Oh, she can do it because she's very bossy. Oh, well, come on, we can do it together. <laughs> so you have five stones here. I have five stones, you just throw them down. And you go one. The first round, you just pick one by one. You go one. And, and the second two. round. Yes, two, correct. How, how good is she on a scale of one to ten? Ten. ten. Come on. Ten. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the next round, you go three. You catch three. And the last one, you catch the last one as well. And the last round, you catch all four together. And that's how you are a winner Whoa. like me. Nice. Wasn't that nice? Yeah. OK, so we're going to do a little face off now. We've got maybe, if you can't recognize him, against Chalice. Uh, I'm going to do one, two, three starts, and then he'll, they'll try to get as far as they can. Is that right, Pinder? What are we doing yes. for the rules? For the rules, well, it's going to go. It's going to be two versus two first, and they're going to play. And whoever catches the most stones is going to win, and the other one is going to get knocked out. Okay, let's do it. Ye are san catch up, go. Wow, this is riveting stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll hold it. Just go, go maybe. One, go. Correct. So maybe he has to go as far as he can, and then Chalice has to beat it. Okay, very good, right. No, he still has to keep going. Keep on, going, yeah. keep going, maybe, go. Indonesia, Chalice, Indonesia. Maybe, go. <laughs> go. Come on, maybe. I'll hold your hair. Just go, just go. Oh, nice, nice. Good Lehi, job. Lehi, 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 go. Go. Oh, no! Now it's your right, turn Chalice. now. Chalice. You gotta beat that score. Okay, Chalice, go. <laughs> Goodbye, Chalice. Chalice, Salah, bye bye. You ready? Who wants to go first? Ah, Nikasha. Yi, Ar, San, Tasha. Very good so far. Nice. FY is always very good at different things. Nice. Showboating now. I think he's played this before, probably. Uh, X Nova, how do you think he's doing so far? He's very good. Thank you. Is there any other, any other tips you could give apart from he's very good? Mm, I think he'll win this. You think he'll win? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Whoa! Oh! So you almost finished the two. Okay, aim. One, two, three, catch it. Go. Go, go. Let's not give you any pressure. Nice. Oh, what is up with this team? Right. All right, FY, FY stay here, maybe. 